I type O B L O L O S S O L S S Tarkov, and Google will figure it out. Abdolbos. Abdol. Ab is it Abdolbos or Abdolbos? Abdol. I don't know. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast, which I've dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam. And <laughs> I'm Veritas, and the kid's dead. I don't know why that just reminded, just the came to mind. The kid's dead? The, kid, the kid's dead. This is like a, a meme. For, like, I don't even know. It might have been limited to just the Skeptics Guide to the Universe podcast. I'm not really sure, but there was... Uh, there was this woman who was a, like, one of those psychic, I'm using air quotes, like, psychic, yeah, yeah, medium, yeah. whatever. And she, for the longest time, was, like, getting involved in all of these criminal cases, like, getting hired by, like, attorneys and, like, detectives to, like, you know, solve all these murders and whatever. And... I forget her name. Damn, it sucks. I forgot her name. But um, but there was this one case where she basically was like on television and like told the parents of this kid that was missing, like your kid's dead. And then like uh, a couple weeks later, the kid turns up. Flying. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like whole. Oh, and I just remember them like because she was like you know a kind of a bigger older lady that kind of had a little bit of a oh gruff voice, so they'd constantly god. just be like, "Yeah, the, the kid's the dead. Kid's dead. The kid's. You're sorry, your kid's dead." Damn. God, I forget what her name Brutal. is. I'll have to find out. What a witch. I don't know why that just came into my head. I just wanted to say, and the kid's and dead. The kid's dead. <sighs> it's nice that our uh, our little secret project is finally out. Our cover of uh, Linkin Park in the end. <laughs> Bro, okay, now that, I wonder if, uh, so much for subtlety, I wonder if he did some more training on yeah. my voice. Because listening to, I felt like it was, I thought I might have been biased. Because you know how we always feel like our voices sound yeah. weird to us? The thing is that, like, I, that used to be a thing, but I've done enough voiceover of my own shit and videos yes, that, like, we've it's no heard our own voices me. so much. Nobody's heard my own voice more than me. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so when I heard the, the one he did where he took the intro to like last week's podcast and flipped yes. it so that oh my voice. Oh my God. The AI, it was an AI trained on my voice was say, was speaking over Jesse and then, um, you know, Jesse's voice was speaking over me. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was just me or not, uh, but it seemed like it was pretty unanimous that your voice was 100% like, I don't believe it was AI. I believe you sat and recorded it manually. My voice was me. I feel like it was me pitched up like yeah. half a step combined with sealable bag. Or <laughs> like there was some, there's like some, yeah. it was like some very minor. There was a couple of inflection little bits that were maybe like a yeah. part of your very, and you I don't think, really have an accent. No, but. but I think that's it. I was like, I think we talk like, especially when I'm in, in it, I talk in like a different like register even of my like when I'm like just your like, voice was a little lower. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if I'm just like talking like normal, but when I'm like like presentation talking, I think I take it higher. So it, I think that was part of it, just the way I inflect words. What's funny is that in the Lincoln Park thing, yours sounded spot on when you were rapping. Well, I was like, I feel like that Veritas learned these lines and Bro, that's what I'm saying. So what he said was he <laughs> trained the the original one, um, the AI on like it was like twice as much on your voice that on my oh, voice, okay. which is, which is he thought was maybe why like it, mine wasn't so, Yeah, it sounded more like a friend of mine from high school. Um, actually, um, did, but there, but there were also periods where I'm like, yo, that sounds like me. And it wasn't at first, I didn't even realize that it was me. I thought it was like you. And I literally thought it was you. And like, I couldn't tell if it was like a mixture of like geeks sealable <laughs> like i don't know if there was some like canadian mixed in there like you know maybe terrence and philip he used as it in the training algorithm but um but then yeah th i think he must have done some more training yeah um because it i dude it's it's just wild it's it's literally lincoln park in the end with me doing the rapping yeah and jesse doing the singing 
but AI trained on our voices, yeah. and it sounds exactly like if we were to, were yeah. if we would do it, it would not sound as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like now, I'm not even gonna do covers anymore. I'm just gonna have AI Dude. train on my voice do the covers. Veritas had bars. Yeah, it was so funny. It was so funny. And it even like dubbed like like panned and doubled your voices like i don't yeah. know if he did like any music production stuff there or if that was like the tool but you were doubling like your vocals were doubled yeah dude in like the way that you want to double because you can't just take audio you can't take audio and double it and then just like and then like pan one to the left and one to the right and expect that to sound like bigger no. or wider you cannot do that because of like phasing and and, and it yeah. just ends up being weird and sounds in flat and whatever but what you can do is l play exactly the same thing at the same time but because you're there's always a subtle difference yeah in in the, how you pluck the strings or yeah. how you sing that it's it's not enough to where you end up with phase issues because what happens with phase yeah. issues is you look at the waveform yeah and if the waveform goes up like this what happens is if you have like another waveform at the same time that has the same exact thing the wave kind of cancels itself yep. out, which is actually really cool. My, my my dad's like a genius when it comes to this stuff, and he explained to me that's how they do um, one of the more common techniques for how they make like those karaoke tracks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because very often what they have is they might have they might have like a either they can isolate the vocals with like EQing or whatever. Yep. Um, or they have a, like a, the uh, actual acapella track. And then they have the full song. And what you can do is yep. you take the you take the vocals, you put it over the song, and then you invert the phasing, and the vocals cancel out the vocals, and it just sounds like there's a band playing, and it's there's no unreal. Yeah, there's no vote. It's crazy. Yep, dude, that stuff. That I mean, when we did music stuff and we were like setting up for events, and and like how you have to arrange your subwoofers in a certain way. Cause if you don't do it the right way, then they cancel each other out. And you're like, you're like, yeah, you have all that. these huge subs and you're like, where's the bass? And it's because the phase is weird and there's no bass. And dude, it's like, that stuff is fascinating. That's why the people who play like live concerts and why, like part of why I hate live stuff. They're all about like, yeah, man, you got to have all this, you know, analog, you got to have real amplifiers and you got to get them. And it's like, you put the microphone in the wrong place at the wrong distance at the wrong point. Yeah. You, you run into phase and it just sounds like and yep. I wouldn't even know how to identify like that. dude. I plug into my laptop and it sounds, it sounds better than yeah. anything. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. So, but, know. but the, the, in the end podcast cover was as the, the ones where our voices flipped was really brain melting. Cause you were just like, what's happening. That was good. I freaked my wife out, dude. At first she was like, she didn't care. It was one of those things where she like I would say something at night and we're in bed and she's like pause the video and she's like what you know <laughs> I tell her something uh, you know uninterested and then yeah. she's she's you know starts playing the video and I'm like oh I got to show you something she's like pause the video you know <laughs> like what and I started playing it and I could tell she was like did a little bit of a double take like <laughs> and kind of rolled her eyes and was like oh that's weird and then just kind of continued on but it got her for a brief yep, moment for a minute <laughs> she was like for a minute she was like yo that actually is kind of creepy <laughs> oh man so good so what's up man bro well a couple things okay one um our uh our homie uh uneventful gaming uh just got married uh oh last weekend. that's so sick yeah just got married um freaking congrats beautiful 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 couple um Ooh. And then on a completely unrelated note, uh, I was traveling over the weekend, drove down to North Carolina for a friend's wedding. Um, ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Completely unrelated. Um, it just so happened to be the same day know, as the same, same day of the venue. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that was, uh, that was a, a really good time. That's uh, sick. Dude, North Carolina is so nice. Yeah, it is. Um, it's gorgeous. But we we did all that driving. I'm still kind of a little worn out from it. How long? It's 24. Uh, sorry, 12 hours yeah. total. So we drove to Jersey, Ugh. and then I so saw I had like a pre-op appointment at like five o'clock on Friday, and the wedding was like six o'clock Saturday. 
Damn. you know, or, or whatever. Yeah. So I was like, got out of my appointment, drove to Jersey, went to bed, woke up at, you know, butt crack at dawn and then drove from Jersey straight into, uh, straight into Damn. North Carolina, showered, um, realized I don't fit into my suit anymore. <laughs> so I, I put on a couple of pounds since my wedding. Uh, so I had to, Damn. I didn't, I didn't button my pants. But Bro, luckily, sometimes you just you, luckily the belt, belt, and then you just unbutton the pants, and you're chilling. Yeah, I mean, chilling. The thing is that, like, I just don't have a 28 inch waist anymore. Yeah, you know? I'm more 31 ish. You know, I, I feel you, man. Get the dad bod without being a dad. Um, which yeah. is life go- life goals. Life goals. Yeah, we all <laughs> um, eventually want to end up at dad bod. But one of the more interesting things that's relevant to that is before we left, I basically binged the silo. Yes. All of season one. Yes. And then on the way down and back, me and Meg listened to the book. There's three books. Yeah. 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 There's okay. First of all, there's three books. So of course I finished the season and I'm like, I need more. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Just want, want more. Um, and found out there were books. Yep. And I'm like, okay, there's like three books. Maybe that maybe that's like three seasons, or maybe like the first book is like, you know, half yeah. of the first season or something like that. And first of all, my wife listens to books on tape at like two X speed. That's how I watch YouTube videos. <laughs> Bro, I, I don't or it might even be she might even listen faster. All I can say is that I lie in bed. I lie in bed. She's downstairs listening to a book on tape. And all I hear is, <laughs> and I'm like, what the, f- is there like a, a snake or a bird <laughs> in my house? And I go downstairs and it's, all it is is like the, s- s- yeah, s-, s sounds the, really the fast. Sounds re- when it's like, <laughs> like, that's how fast they're talking. <laughs> and my, and my wife, book in her hand. And reads along with the book at like 2.5x because she likes having the book and the tactile, you know, whatever. But at the same time, it's just way easier to. Yo, she to listens like, and reads at the same time. She, yeah, part of it, like she likes to also yeah. have the book and to have like the, you know, the collection well, of the books. I wonder whatever. if like comprehension goes way up if you're hearing it and seeing it. Because probably because like I'll read an I, entire page, get to the end, and be like, I I read the words, but I wasn't. That is paying literally attention. me. I I I genuinely like I I say I can't read. Obviously, I can read, but I can't read. I can't sit down to read. I get seventeen words in, and I've I am gone. You know what I mean? I might go through twenty pages, but I'm gone. I can have zero retention. So to be able to hear it. And you do read faster than people talk, so I understand. Turn the speed up, and if you can kind of sync that up a little bit, I bet it just keeps you focused. Damn. I wonder if, like, comprehension goes way up if she does that. That's actually crazy. Dude, and we were listening at, like, 1.25 or maybe 1.5 speed, and she's like, it's so slow. That's for me, crazy. For me, there was actually a lot of, like, it wasn't really a big deal, but there were a couple moments where I'm like, man, some of the tension was lost. That like, yeah. you know, when someone is like, when there's like a pregnant pause in the middle of like a tense moment, when yeah. someone's like, says something, they take a beat. Yep. And then they say something else. When there's no break in between. Yeah. It's like, it loses all the tension. So yep. a lot of those moments happen when, you know, but I mean, I don't, I don't need the tension, uh, you know, For when sure. I'm hearing it, I, you know, picture in my head anyway. So we got um, on the way down and back. We ended up getting about 60 or 70 percent of the way through the first book. Oh, OK. And if I had to guess, I would say that I'm like halfway through season two. Yeah. OK. I it's funny because I did the same thing with Dune. Like I watched the Dune movie, the recent one, and I loved it. I love that movie. I loved Denis New. And I, I just consumed so much content. Like I know what happens in every book. Like I just like spoil it all. You know what I mean? I go through and I watch like breakdowns and everything. And so I did the same thing. I finished Silo and I was like, I knew there were books. So I was like, uh, uh-uh. so I like read a bunch about like what happens and stuff. Um, I really liked the show. I, I felt like it got a little slow in the middle, but I, I liked it a lot. It's really interesting. Normally what happens is the TV shows take out a bunch of 
Yeah. Because they have to fit more in, right? Yeah. And you lose a whole bunch of context and all. And they added. Yeah, way that's what more I in. I'd read that they like really, um, almost like didn't want to skip past they almost wanted to like show what life in the silo was like and really like get you to feel that before they sped into the bigger like grander themes and conspiracies and stuff yeah that's yeah like you know there's what 10 episodes and i think like the first five episodes or whatever like follow a different set of characters kind of than the second five yeah um and like but if you looked at like the the first half of the book i would say is season one it was like 10% of the was like five episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which was just really bizarre because it was like... It's normally the over, opposite, yeah. They skipped over all of this stuff and, and they, they combined multiple characters, which was another thing. There, oh, there was a couple There was a couple cases where it was like in the show, there was this one guy over here that was like, you know, had this thing that he was doing. And then there's this other person over here that was like a love interest. And they were two separate people with two different kind of things. Yeah. In the book, um, actually, no, sorry, that, that that's how it was in the book. In the show, those were the same person. Yeah, interesting. But it spent five times longer with that person, yeah. like fleshing out. Um, but yeah, the show is really, really, it's really good. Really good. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to see to see more of it. I'm, dude. I had a little bit of like an epiphany. Which it, this is probably like anybody who's ever taken a literary class is going to be like, yeah, no, <laughs> you know, like this is probably super obvious. But thinking about like all of my favorite stories, all of the best, you know, movies, whatever. There's like really one thing in common amongst all of them, and it's people have either a combination of like human nature yeah like an inbuilt desire to do x yeah um it might be curiosity it might be exploration it might be love whatever right yeah um or just in general the desire for like people to want to pursue what they want to do yeah um and the conflict of somebody preventing them from doing that thing. Like that's basically the core of like every story Yeah, is just, you know, like n name a movie, just name a movie. Let let's test this theory. Oh God. Because you know, ori originally I was thinking, you know, like if you look at all of the um, kind of similar esque genre where it's like sort of post-apocalyptic yeah. dystopian, you know, you've got like the 1984s and you've got like the, yeah. um, uh, what's the one with Katniss, Cat Piss Never Clean. Uh, um, Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Um, yeah. You know, like a, my wife likes a lot of those types of movies as well, um, which I keep trying to get her to, to read 1984. But, um, but like those are all about like wanting to have the freedom to pursue the things you want and yeah. having people say like, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've seen a. I I uh, I went through this like class way back in the day, and it was on like the art of of story and how like all like almost every single story follows like the same one of three formats. You know what I mean? It's like you know you have a character who is confronted with a problem, who meets a guide that provides them a solution, and they execute on that solution, and that either ends up in success or failure. Like. But that formula, and you then know, the character growth along yeah. the way, is and like, and then art. you watch every you know thing, you know, like the easy ones is like you know Star Wars, and you got Luke, and he is a, he is confronted with a problem, he meets his guide Yoda, and you know they attempt he meets Jar Jar, and then one hundred percent becomes a Sith, and so like yeah, it's called the hero's journey, yeah, that's it, and it's like almost everything kind of revolves around that, but yeah, no, I thought uh, I thought I thought Silo was really good. My thing is like, dude, there's so much there's so many good concepts out these days for shows and movies and stuff like that. Like my thing is always just like, does it take itself seriously? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know how to put it other than that. There's probably a better way to put it, but like, like just whatever a show or a TV show, a show or a movie sets out to do is like the logic followed all the way through. I hate when like so many TV shows they have this like really strong concept. Like pilots are cheap now. You can come up with like a 
such a good pilot for a TV show. And you're like, oh my God, this is so sick. And then almost immediately you see these left turns where it's like either the writing is just like lazy and weird or like, or whatever. A great example right now is The Witcher. I don't know if you've watched any of that. Dude. Okay. okay. So like the first, I, yeah, the, the, I'm watching season three, the TLDR of it all is I can't even get through it. It is just snooze fest. It's awful, dude. I hate it. And, uh, I don't, do you know anything about what happened with like the Witcher series and Henry Cavill and all that kind of stuff? All I know is The Witcher 3 is the only game I've ever refunded on Steam. Wow. That is a no, hot take. Not Holy because it's cow. not good. I just, I, Such I started, game. I started, it was on the list of like, I needed a game. And yeah, it was yeah, on yeah. every list for greatest game, you know, greatest top five yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but I never played a Witcher game. Yeah. And just getting into it and playing the first 10 minutes, I'm like, I am not, I'm not, I don't know what's going on. I yeah. don't know who these people are. I'm not sucked in. And I'm like, I just, I'm not going to have the time to play it. And I want my $70. Yeah. Back. Yeah. 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 It was, if it wasn't 70, if it was 20 bucks, yeah. I would still have it installed. Nowadays, I'm sure you can get it for 20 bucks. Um, um, yeah. So anyways, I loved the witch. I only ever played the Witcher three, by the way, I'm not like a Witcher fan through and through. I only played the Witcher three. Anyways, once again, TLDR, they're making a show. Everyone's hyped because everyone loves the Witcher and they cast Henry Cavill and everyone's like Henry Cavill is an L this, this show sucks or, or like he sucks for that. And then the first season came out and they're like, Oh my God, Henry Cavill's the best Geralt of Rivia you could have ever casted. It was the best thing ever. And it turns out that's when like everybody was falling in love with Henry Cavill because he's such a nerd and he like, his, he builds his own gaming PCs. And he's like, I've played through the Witcher three, like five times. That's why I'm super excited to play this character. Like I've read all the books. I do all this. And, um, uh, Anyways, first season comes out and it was like really cool. It was like, it wasn't the best TV ever, but you were like, it's really cool. And you can see them getting their footing. And then season two was like, okay. And then before this season came out, season three just came out before uh, Henry Cavill announced he's leaving the show and they're just recasting him. Huge, huge Netflix show. They're just like recasting the main character. And it turns out why how is that show not how is that show not being canceled and so many other good shows have been and, and it turns out it, he left because like basically when he was asked about it he said I committed my commitment to the show was for seven seasons as long as the showrunners were committed to telling good stories Oof. that <laughs> oh yeah. god that's and, a and then like and then it came out all this stuff that like the the director and and the showrunners were talking about how um. They were like, they were like, Henry was hard to work with. He was a nuisance because he cared so much about the source material. And everybody was like, what? This guy was troublesome because yeah. he wanted to make our dog show better. He was so better. troublesome because he wanted to make a good show. And Bro, and someone's career is going to get ended and it's not going to be his. No, he, he just dipped. And like, and this seat, dude, and it's just like, oh, that was such a tangent. But all that to say, like, that's such a, that's a good example if you watch that show of like just like it feels like completely abandoning themes and thoughts and styles and motifs that you then set up like i'm not married to any particular genre two of my favorite shows i've seen in the past five years have been house of the dragon and ted lasso right Com complete completely different ends of the spectrum but they mm -hmm. felt like shows that respected what they were trying what they said they were going to do in the beginning like in the first few episodes through now house of dragon has one season but like that's what i'm talking about it's like i'm not married to one genre you can be you can be it can be a comedy it can be this but it's like i hate when you can just tell that the writing is just like completely abandoning its own themes or just like people start talking differently than they used to like that stuff just takes yeah. me out so much and i thought silo did a really good job like it, it just felt grounded and, and it felt like it was it was taking itself seriously all the stories and all the characters and uh it was cool i liked it i'm such a sucker for the anything that's like the dystopian future where you're not allowed to be curious or ask yeah questions. yeah yeah i'm a sucker I because love I, that, man. I would be the first yep. one to get thrown into the grinder right like, I I, love because it. i just i can't not be like you guys aren't wondering like what's going on yeah you guys, nobody's thinking about you know i'd yep. be the one that would be like hey man have you been thinking about the thing and they'd be like yo hey get over here he's yep. a thought criminal you got a thought criminal and yep. I, you know i get yep. taken away in the burlap sack and you'd never see me again i like it oh that infuriates me and i saw i saw the other one you put on here severance oh my god give me season two right now in my veins oh well i almost had a heart attack because my 
Barber, who I still have to talk to because I'm mad, he was like, yo, guess what's, what show just got canceled? And I'm like, what? He's like, Severance. I'm like, what? I'm like, no way. First night, 1899, and then Severance? I'm like, what are you talking about? And I was pissed yo. for like a week. And then I'm like, yo, I got to go check this. And I Googled it. And so there's a writer's strike. There's a writer's strike. strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's on hold. Yes. But it was like, no, nah, definitely bro, not. What kind of <laughs> debate? Like that, that would be, yeah, that would be brutal. They would, yeah, they would never cancel that. That was like one of the number one rated shows for forever. Apple TV needs that. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I heard that. Pay. I heard it was on hold, which made me sad because the writer's strike. Now, obviously, the writer should get paid. I'm not, I'm not mad the writer strike is happening. They should get paid what they're owed. But I'm just saying, I, uh, I heard that and I was like, damn. Yeah, I, I hate to say this because, like, you know, people in their jobs and everything, like, you know, it's, it's yeah. all out there. But, but like, but give me, yo, when ChatGPT five just came out, like, now's not the time to like go on writer <laughs> strike. That's all I'm saying. Oh my god, that's all I'm saying, dude. Like, you have you have a job that has just been demonstrably shown to <laughs> be major risk due to the AI, like, the the. the, the oh my god, bro. <laughs> so like, what? Dude, I, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if Bro. they couldn't just feed the screenplay to chat GPT and be like spit out season two. I, I wonder if they did that during this whole thing just to spite the writers, because, you know, the executives or whoever are like pissed off. Yeah, at the writers, yeah. and, you know, there's always that. Um, I bet you like one of them opened up chat. GPT. Well, they had to call the grandson to figure out how to use use the chat GPT. Yeah. Um. But once they eventually figured it out, they just copy pasted the transcript <laughs> in and were like, yo, give me season two. And it was like, wow, this is better than what they were going to give us anyway. So I have no idea. I have done zero research into this, but somebody literally just sent me the headline reads. The studio's AI proposal included scanning a background actor's likeness for one day's worth of pay and using their likeness in perpetuity without any form of pay or consent. And so I was just like that in, in that realm. Somebody sent me that and I was like, what does this mean? But I haven't read it yet. But like. Um, it's like the black dude. It's like Joan is awful in real life, dude. Like, oh my god, oh my god. Well, so yeah, that's that's that. That's that. Mm. What's uh, what's new with you? What's new in with you slash Tarkov land slash what? Dude, nothing is new. Uh, so actually, not nothing. Nothing really new happened or is happening. Um. I will say, man, the uh, the the patch. Okay, so they I'm pretty sure they uploaded the patch Thursday last week. I, they did because we I was like I played for eight hours, but that's all I have, right? And we like talked about it. This is the new net code, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I have a proper week. I have a full week's worth of play time, uh, and I've been playing a lot. I've been playing a lot recently. Um, and dude, okay, so once again, I know, you know, I, I can't speak, I can't say demonstrably X, Y, or Z, but I have been very intentionally in Tarkov looking for moments of desync. I've been, pl we, have, we, I, we played so much that I'm like looking for like, okay, like if I swing out, you know what I mean? Or if someone's shooting at me and, I, and I'm running to cover, like, you know what I mean? In these moments, I've like heightened awareness. I clip everything religiously and I've been like looking for, like, I want to clip, I'm going to get a good clip of me dying to desync. Um, I have one and it happened today. In 36 hours of Tarkov gameplay. I have one clip. And it was like bad desync too today, but it happened this morning or yesterday morning yeah. or something. But like, bro, at at this point, I'm full blown just saying, I think the like the net codes better, not fix. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's it's it it, it is in it has improved exactly. And 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 they never said like it's it's so funny how this stuff you know always happens. Like they never said we're fixing the net code. They never said we're getting rid of desync and everything in the patch notes and all that kind of stuff. They were like. We're hoping to increase the accuracy of the position and decrease the amount of times you run into desync, right? And that is exactly what's happened based, like, just based on my, um, 
based on my playtime, based on my like 35 hours of playtime since the last podcast, is uh, I, I haven't died. And there have been a few times where I died and I was just like, oh, like I didn't know there's another guy or like GG's. I thought he was to the left and he was to the right. And then chat would be like, bro, that's totally a time where you would have desync normally. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. And I'd clip it and we'd watch it back. And I was like, I did a really quick peek. And I didn't see him over there. And before I got behind cover, boom, you see the tracer come out and I die. And I'm like, whoa. I was like, this is exactly the type of situation where I would die three feet behind the wall normally. You know what I mean? And so, mm. um, and then you, have you been playing, you've been playing solo or with groups? Uh, both, both. I've been doing more solo streams and more solo, like half streams and stuff like that. Uh, but both solo and, and in duos. Um, I was going to say, bit. like, I, I noticed. It was a lot easier to notice the desync just in general or yeah. a lot of the networking issues when you play with other people, right? Because you just yes. see the, the stuttery footsteps and whatever. So if, if if you had said like, oh, no, I've been playing only solo for the last oh, no. month, I'd be like, no, well, maybe that's why. Still it might mostly seem duo. Bit. Still mostly duo. Nice. Um, right on. I will say, so like this, th this might not make sense. And this, this is incredibly anecdotal. So I feel like the stuttery and jitteriness of my duo has gotten worse. Like it, there'll be like a, like stretches where it's like really bad, where he's like w lagging a lot. Or I've this has been happening a few times too, where his feet are firmly planted and he's just like skating. Like there is no running animation. He's just like moving around. Or you get these like weird little like micro vibrations. But when it's not looking bad, it looks better. So the thing, now this could be placebo, this could be my brain freaking out, but you know how we talk about all the time where like they're running, but like every step their like foot will slide back. Like they're not planted on the ground. They're just playing run and moving the character at a different speed than the run speed. So it, it just looks weird. Yeah. When it's not stuttery, it feels more grounded to me. It feels like like a person's foot hits the ground and stays there. Like, and then it just goes, and you're like, like oh. the animation matches. Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. So it's like, it feels like when it's bad, it, it feels a little worse. But when it's good, it feels way more grounded. Um, oh, interesting. Tower. Tower's thing about lead. Yeah, Tower said, for, for what it's worth, the lead on moving targets is more in line with what math suggests it should be. Uh, I got a, I got 50-50 on moving targets in offline raids where it was staged and 38 50 on live raids where it was not staged. I think it means like right 38 on. out of 50 shots. Yo, and what's yeah, yeah. crazy is one of the things I was going to say was I, you know, it's funny that Tower said that because Tower is one of the few people we would believe. You know what I mean about that? Uh, I was going to say I felt like, I, like leading targets felt better to me. Like when I'm tracking a scav and I just shoot ahead of him, he dies. Like, I, it's felt more intuitive to me. I don't know what the math is, you know what I mean, at, at X number of meters, whatever, but it's felt better. I feel like I'm hitting more shots. And, uh, and yeah, and coincidentally... It, it, I used to, it used to be, for me, it used to be, like, within, you know, like, 150 meters with, like, yeah. uh, a voodoo, 90% of the shots, if someone was just running horizontally, right, like, perpendicular... yeah like 90% of my shots are going to hit like one or two. Yeah. And like back in the day, 2018, 2019, but then like the last year yeah. I played, it was like 5% of my shots. Yeah. No, and I, I completely and I agree. Know what, why? You yep. know? I was about to say, you know, what's funny. You know, what's a funny coincidence, man. I have had more fun playing Tarkov this past week than in a long time, man. Like and you think a lot of that is just it's it's less the painful just, deaths which yeah. make it less frustrating. You know what's crazy? I'm sort of, I'm I'm winning so many more fights. It's like this is all anecdotal, Vertus. So I, I I wanna I wanna I wanna preface that with this. Like I've tried to be as uh you know not scientific but but more objective, objective and, and yeah. less emotional about just the the binary answer to the question of is the desync better? I've been trying to like. Be like, not look at field, look at more just like, I've clipped every single desync death. I've played this many raids. I've, I've played for this long. You know what I mean? And and I feel like I have an answer to that question now. In entire weeks of gameplay, I have one clip of me dying to desync. That, to me, is enough to, to say for myself it's demonstrably better. 
Now, the rest of this is all just like a, like emotion. It could be placebo. I could be making it up, and I'm very aware of that. But I have had so much more fun. I have felt, I, you know what's funny? is like we laughed about this a few weeks ago because I said this, and when I said it, I knew you were going to laugh because I said, I was like, I feel like I, I don't know how to PvP anymore. Like, I feel like I suck. And you laughed because you were like, you had shared those sentiments like a year ago where you were like, I feel like I just like, either everyone got better than me or I got much, much worse, right? And I felt that. I have been plowing through people. I have been having so much fun. Every single one of my deaths, I can be like, I didn't see that guy over there or he was, he, I expected him to reload and he didn't. Like every single death has a reason and, and I can be like, oh damn, I didn't see that coming. He got me, GG's, he hit a good shot. And, and, and every single fight, dude, I'm just like rolling. I'm like four mans, five mans. We did a streets on, we did a random streets the other day. There were 11 dead bodies in the check 15 hallway. I killed six of them, dude. I, we were just like, me and Valiant were frying, bro. It was just like, it, I don't know. So like, I feel like I'm hitting my shots. I feel like my accuracy has gone up. I feel like, um, I've been one tapping people like and just hitting so many more shots and the hit rates just feels good. I just feel like I'm connecting shots. I don't know. And it could be some, you know, it's just like, it's a snowball, right? Where it feels a little better. So you feel better. And the more confident you are, the better you play. And the better you play, the more confident you feel. And the more confident you feel, the better you play. So like, it could be that, you know, it was a little change that just sparked a chain reaction. Once again, very aware, but it just feels like the hit wrench feels tighter. It feels way tighter on scavs. It feels tighter on PMCs. When I shoot people in the head, they die. Almost half of the raids I've played in the past week have been with 545, which everyone is always trashing on 545. You can't want to have, dude, 545, I'm cruising, just like flying through people. The raids have been so good. I've genuinely, and late wipe too. Like I normally kind of don't really care for the late wipe, just like, let me throw another slick and whatever and get an HK. Like, but it's been so fun. The PvP Bro, has I been hate, so fun. I hate the not knowing. Like, yeah. When I used to play sports, you know, I played baseball, basketball, football, lacrosse. Um, all of the hobbies I've ever got into, you know, whether it was different instruments or whatever. Even if I'm like driving and I haven't driven in a while right yeah when i feel rusty or or i lose or i play poorly or i get outplayed or whatever never in my life has it ever been like why yeah yeah yeah. yeah. i always know like i didn't play well yep or they played amazing yep or i'm a little rusty yep. it doesn't feel right so yep tarkov was the only thing that has ever been like it feels bad and I don't know why. Yep, dude. And I and I'm trying so hard not to overhype it, but but I genuinely am excited. I haven't felt that in a week. I haven't felt like what the hell is going on? What happened there? You know what you I mean? Know what happened? I, I've died to you know what happened. What? All the veterans are sick of the game. They all left. Yeah, okay? yeah. So I'm just so, flying so, through scrubs. <laughs> so there's 5% of the player bases, you know, the game's, the, the game's dead. Game's the dead. kid's dead and the game's dead. Um, so, you know, the server, uh, performance. a little bit of the server is the performance yeah, is yeah. way better, right? And you're just cruising through the noobs and Yo, that's listen. why it feels better and that's why you're winning fights. I Realistically, mean, like, it could be. Now, I can pull up my dog tag case right now. I've been fragging on some level 50s to 70s. Like, we've been yeah, getting... We've been I get bought my account.com. Yeah, <laughs> But you man, know, yeah. I'm yeah, telling you, I am telling you, like, I know that feeling. I've been feeling it so intensely this wipe specifically and last wipe. And that feeling is just gone as of l l this past week. Now, I, I, I hope it stays that I way. I hope dude. it stays that way. And that's the thing, right? It's like, I'm not trying to freaking ride BSG. Like, it could all break tomorrow. They could push a patch and it could break. 14.0, when I read the patch, the, the roadmap for 14.0, I still get 100%, 50% like excited and 50% like there's no way this is not going to break the game. It's too many new features, right? So like I'm not married to it, but all I know is that like right now, brother, right now, it feels good. I'm not wondering why I'm dying. The raids are fun. Now, every once in a while, we get really dead raids. Like, when I hop on early in the morning, it's super dead raids and stuff like that. But 
but when the raids are full, when they're full of PMCs, um, dude, it's, I, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't want to overhype it. If you haven't played Tarkov in a while and you were considering it, hop into a few raids. You know what I mean? I, I still think people's, and, and, and I understand that this happens with me too. So this isn't an aggressive thing, but I, people obviously just like lead with their emotions, right? Like if you've been having an awful wipe and you're just like hate BSG and you hate everything, like you're gonna find a way to hate it. And if you're like, you know, BSG can't do anything wrong. Like you're going to be like, it's so much better. I'm trying my hardest to be in the middle. I'm sure I have, you know, X, Y, Z biases or whatever. Like, but dude, it feels good. It feels good, bro. Now there are, oh, well, That's first of dream, all, man, first of all, did you see that friendly guys tweet the video he did? Was it about Tarkov? Testing desync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a 60 second. 60 second. I saw him finish only up with a dance mat. Yes. I saw that too. Which honestly, does anything else really matter? No, he just wins. And honestly, I there's still a part of me that it, that's still so bonkers that I part of me thinks it could be a fake <laughs> and I need to go back and see. Like, for all I know, yeah, a controller. He did, in his the, hands. he did the whole thing. No, he did the whole thing on keyboard on stream and was like, it would be funny if I plugged in the mat and did the mat for the last five seconds of it. <laughs> um, he looked like he had gotten a workout in. <laughs> I believe he did it. I mean, bro, like I, I was playing ping, uh, pinball with my wife. We went to this arcade in North Carolina when we were down there. And I mean, like I was just standing up playing like ski ball and shooting at the, I mean, bro, yeah. I'm, a, I don't know how the fuck he did that, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyways, he did a video where he... It was a really clever way to test desync. Um, it's not a... It's not like this is the definitive, you know what I mean? But it was just like a clever way to test it. So basically what he did was he... he it was him and a buddy in an online raid. And he had like a... He just... It, they found an open area. And he walked backwards. So he just held S. Right. He just walked backwards and he told his buddy, he was like, get behind me and shoot me in the back. But like try and like you know, not like run and just shoot, but like try and like get behind me and shoot me in the back. And he did it before the patch. And he was on a high ping server because I think he's like in EU or he doesn't have access to a son. So he, his ping was like 120 or whatever. And he, and he showed he talked about it. And the dude, <laughs> dude, and the, his friend walked up and his friend was four feet in front of him and he was like wait do you want me to shoot and he was like yeah and he was shooting and hitting friendly guy like it's like here i'll i'll send it to you so you can so you can and i'll put it in the chat too um but basically he had he he the desync was so bad that the guy was behind him, even though on friendly guy's screen, he was in front of him. Oh, that was the old server. That was the old server at, on a hundred plus ping. And then he did it again after the patch uploaded and it, and it, and it wasn't great, but it was like a lot better. Now that's not the definitive, right? Like this is perfect. The servers are great. You don't have to worry about it anymore, but you can see the guy's gun get barrel stuffed when he's in front of him, <laughs> like by friendly guy. Uh, and then when then he did it again on um, after, and it was just better. It was just a really clever way to test like the positional desync between two players, two different clients connecting to the server at the same time. It was super interesting. That's wild. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I'm like trying to run through my head how that all works now once again those were higher ping but on lower ping it'll be better anyway and it was like a lot a lot better so that was interesting that was just like a little interesting huh interesting it was a clever way to test that because that's the kind of that's the kind of stuff we feel where like especially in close quarters battles when you're both moving you're like, what the hell? Like, what you see did not match. Like, how did he shoot me in the back of the head? How did he shoot me? You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, that's 
it can be that bad. If the guy you're playing with has 80 ping or 100 ping, it's like, it can be pretty bad. Um, now, uh, the patch feels good, and that's what we want Tarkov to be, right? We want Tarkov to feel good. However, it definitely is not without its bugs. Um, so we talked a little bit about how, like, last week about how, uh, the, like, the silent nades. It's weird. I actually don't think I've encountered a silent nade since we talked last. They've done two or three hotfixes since the patch. So I actually think that they are, like, addressing some of these things. The memory leak huh. is still pretty bad, but it's better. But it's still, well, because once again, it's probably not the memory leak, right? What's the, you know, but the, the effective memory leak is better. Dude, this is a new one. This has happened on multiple maps. Um, as a solo and with groups, dude. So I have my FPS counter up cause everybody's like, how's the FPS? How's the FPS on streets? How's the FPS on streets? Right. I'll be so 40, 90, 13, 900 K 32 gigs of Ram beefcake of a PC. I'll be on streets and I'll be like, Oh, why is it? So I'll pull up the FPS counter 30 frames per second. And I'm like, bro, this is brutal. If anybody in my general area, including myself, shoots a gun. My FPS goes up to 120, and then over the course of six seconds, falls back down to 30. And if I put my gun on semi-auto and just tap, 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 and look around, it's smooth as butter, 120 frames per second. Stop shooting, all the way back down to 30. Bro, scuff. Scuffed, bro. I don't know what the hell. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that happens. Well, only thing I can think of, and, and this is one of those things, like this is one of those things where if I had been working at BSG for like four years and I heard that, I would be like, I know exactly what that is. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um because because you know how these systems are interrelated, for sure. and, you know, whatever. But so First thing that comes to mind for me is there sometimes with networking, there are like priority, like a priority queuing system. Yeah. When certain things happen, the game is like, I got to render this first. I have to, you know, put this stuff in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to send these packets first. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's possible that one of those like either secondary or background tasks w whether it was networking related or like graphics related yeah it's possible that one of those things is scuffed yeah and bogging everything down and then when you shoot because it's such a high priority thing it like oh, puts that into the background interesting. and all of a sudden the game's like cool 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 and then you're done shooting and the game's like okay get back to this System, like the you know, like, ambient noise system could for some reason be scuffed and sucking up all your frames but when bullets are flying the game knows to be like screw ambient noise bullets and then and then when there's no shots like i so i, I that's just that's an example. actually a really good potential thing is yeah, the noise because okay. we were talking about we were talking last week or the week before about how that's the way that a lot of sound works in these games yeah you don't have you don't get to just say play this audio you yeah. have a file and you say, hey, audio subsystem or in the operating system or whatever, please play this thing. And then it cues it and it handles, um, you know. Interesting, yeah. So That's I mean, super interesting. Yeah, that like the game basically knows when bullets are being fired, that's the most important thing. And so some other scuffed system gets moved to the background. Okay, so like, so, so it's like me who's like such a nerd, right? Like I have, I would have no idea, right? Or, or, or sorry. Me, who has no idea about game development or anything like that, I would just have, like, no idea. It, I, I just, it freaked me out. The thing is, though, um, that, um, so, and, and the reason it's important to, like, figure these things out is because, like, so many people have been talking about, like, losing FPS or, like, not having good FPS or the patch ruined my FPS or something, and... Basically, I think a lot of people have had that bug and haven't known. Because if you Alt F4 and reconnect to the game, like if I Alt F4 and reconnect to the game, I have 140 frames per second. Like, And now that would clean up a memory leak too, whatever. 
But I think a lot of people have had that particular bug, whatever it is, and then just attributed it to this patch ruined my FPS. Because I had that bug on woods too, not just streets. So like people are like, oh, my FPS sucks. This has no idea. And if they didn't know that, like, which obviously they wouldn't know, but if they didn't know, then they'd be like, oh, the FPS in this patch just sucks. When it's not every raid, it's just some raids you catch this bug. And if you get that bug, your frames are absolute garbage. So uh, it's been really interesting. But like that is one. Uh, we've had a ton, a ton, a ton of the, uh, um, you know how like when you go to your inventory, like you have your hands on your gun, you like put your gun to your side in one hand and like one hand just goes up. You know what I mean? Yep. I've a ton of people just stuck in that pose. I, I like, I was on shoreland. I like ran up and I saw a guy and I backed up from him and I turned on my flashlight and he was like this. And he just like looked at me and shot me and killed me. And like the bullets were just like coming from his chest. And I was like, <laughs> what the hell? That's been happening even to scavs. You see the like, scav will have the busy hands bug. It's super weird. Like, like will be in their inventory and just shoot you from wherever the bullets just magically appearing. Um, I'm trying to think if we've we've had any other bugs. Super common. Yeah, I don't know. Just weird stuff. We've had some weird stuff. Um, but, yeah, the audio still fried, but I haven't had as many silent nades. Um, yeah, there was the... There was the, we talked about that last week where the, the flashbang blew up like three seconds after. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I don't know why. Um, some looting stuff where, you know, you can't loot this person's, um, oh, I had like a weird thing where I like duplicated something today. Like Valiant brought me my kit and he ditched it. And while I was searching it, I like moved a CMS kit and it duplicated it. And then every time I would move one of the CMS kits, both of the CMS kits would move. Like the one I would click and drag would move from where it was to where I put it. And the other one in my bag would just move to a random other cell in my bag. Like, it was super weird. But then if you just, like, tab out and tab back in, it's gone. Like, just, like, weird, weird bugs like that. Um, but nothing crazy. We talked a little bit last week about how I, I felt like... Um, I felt like I did notice the increase in scavs. I feel like they increased the amount of scavs everywhere, but they, but they definitely did on streets. And they listed it as, like, increase the entities. They increased the amount of players, too. It used to say up to 17 players. Now it says up to 20. So like the actual player count didn't go up a lot. But the scavs, dude, Desmond posted a clip and it was it was the end of his raid. Did you see this? No, I was on Twitter. He had killed 80 scavs in one streets raid. 8-0. He was in just okay, like dude. until two minutes left and he was going everywhere. I tried it. Um, I tried it today this morning. I got 60. I got 60 scavs in one raid. Desmond got 80. That he had 55k XP. Fuck. Tiggs ended up doing it and he got 83. Like it's plausible that you could hit 100 scavs in one raid. But like they just, dude, they're everywhere and they keep respawning and it's so sick because stuff is starting to happen like we've talked about. Where like, well, um, I mean that's what we've said for so long. How yes. if as long as they're like legit dumb bots exactly. and they're not and they're not busted. I mean, they can be challenging, right? But as yes. long as they're not absurdly overtuned, yes. then having a million of them is awesome. Awesome. And that's exactly what's happening. I, once again, I don't know this, but it feels like their accuracy got turned down. They're hitting me a lot, but I haven't been one tapped. Like, I haven't, like, just insta died to freaking a scab in a while. Um, so, like, what we've talked about, what we've always talked about is happening. Where, like, you'll be in a fight with a PMC and, like, a scav will start shooting at him or a scav will start shooting at you. And then you have to change the fight because you're like, I can't hold this angle. This stupid scav is shooting at me. Now you have to move. Or that happens to your enemy. You know what else has been interesting? Locate locating PMCs on the map has gotten easier because, because. they're fighting more scav. Like... It's happening. Everything it's, we've talked about, that's bro. That's what we said. Like, it's that happening. is a, it is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, uh, it, it's, it, it, it it's prom, a catalyst. It's a catalyst for PVP. Yeah. Yep. You know, 
because now it's not just you have to cross paths and yep. see the other person at the same place at the same time, right? It's now you can more actively decide to pursue or avoid yep. depending on if you're doing the guide or if you want PVP exactly. or if you got, you know, you want to loot. And it's and it's affecting other <sighs> things too, right? Like um a huge thing is right is like ratting. Everyone's always talking about ratting. Everyone's in bushes, nobody's moving. Well, if a, like you never know how many times the fighting you heard was a guy that was setting up to just like rat then a scav shot him because the scavs don't see bushes, right? And then it, that puts him out, and then now you cross paths with him. You know what I mean? Or like, or be, just because so often, if you're traversing the map, especially with how headphones work right now, you're just like broadcasting your location in 100 meters in every direction, right? So it's like yeah, yeah. somebody hears you, but the amount of times this week I have been... Okay, dude, once again, oh, it's just, it's it's happening, Verit. I was like... The amount of times this week we've been in a fight and I've been like, there's four of them. I don't know how many are scavs. Like I'm in a fight, like I kill one and we don't know how many there is. And then we hear running. And because the scavs will full sprint now, I'm like, dude, there's a ton of people and I don't know which one's a PMC. You know what I mean? Like the, uh, the amount of times I've been like, there's one more, there's one more, there's one more. And I hear a bunch of stuff and I turn it to scav or vice versa. I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's a scav. And I swing it and it's a PMC. Like something... That simple, doubling the amount of scabs in the raid affects the entirety of the in raid experience, just in ways you wouldn't expect. Yeah, in so many ways, right? Not just not just like oh, there are more scabs, I get more XP. In so many ways, they spawn earlier, so immediately, like so much more often this week, I've heard fighting on the map. Maybe not right in front of me, but on the map within the first thirty seconds, and you're like, oh, there's a guy over there. There's a guy over there. So it's giving you that information. I've gotten more XP from raids killing them. You get more opportunity to like get extra meds or whatever. It it is a catalyst for PvP for me chasing down PvP. It's made PvP fights weird because maybe they I go for a flank and then they ruin my flank or the person goes to retreat and then the scavs tell me like something that simple changes everything whether you want PvP or not. Right? Like it, Yeah, yeah. It, oh my god, dude. So the the new scavs, I've been back to just like perma running streets dude because it's got the most scavs on it and it it changes oh. the game so much and they increase the boss spawn chance to like 20 percent on those maps so like killing and glue are spawning so much more frequently ah, it's i so would fun. i would just be it like it sounds like what i would be doing is like playing gun game on streets oh yeah when you because when there's 80 scavs like when you turn on factory pvp like, uh, like pve horde mode yeah. offline Playing gun game is like the ultimate warm up practice training yep. where it's like you pick up a Vepper, half of a magazine, you kill a guy, you pick up his Saiga, you yep. kill a guy, he's got an, an empty Makarov, you pick it up, you're like, yep. I need to reload, you go back. Yep. Uh, it's so much fun. And, and doing that somewhere outside of, mm -hmm. you know, like in a real environment would actually be a lot of fun. It's so fun, man. Oh, so like rare, super positive vibes from uh from Tarkov recently the patch dude the patch has just been feeling feeling good it's been feeling delicious let me tell you about something else that's delicious mm. Veritas. <laughs> i want to take a second and thank the first sponsor of our episode tonight and that is hello fresh uh hello Hi, fresh. fresh hey hey fresh hello. uh hello fresh is america's number one uh meal kit uh, and it's awesome. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. HelloFresh is a longtime partner of the of the podcast, and we love it. It's a product that I can just so vehemently personally vouch for because I used it and I use it uh, and have used it for so long. Um, and it's awesome. The, the big thing for me as a consumer is flexibility and the ability to customize the experience to you, how quickly and easy it is you can customize that experience with how many meals you get, what your priorities are in your meals. Do you want extra protein? Do you want things that be, can be cooked in 15 minutes or less? Do you want vegan? Uh, how many meals do you want? Do you want to take a week off because you're on vacation or X, Y, Z, and then resume the next week? So it just feels like a very consumer-friendly experience. And then obviously the food is delicious. Bro, when we when we got back from North Carolina, 
the first thing we did was like we we were sick of fast food right and from driving oh my god yeah all the way there so it was like ah, i'm hungry but i don't want to get like burger king you know like Dude. i just can't we get home and we're like well we were just gone for days like we have nothing in the you know in the fridge we haven't gone shopping oh wait a minute we do have yes. a couple of things still left over from hello fresh yes. dude the firecracker meatballs oh yeah homie bussin it's so good and honestly these days hello fresh meals are the only meals i get that are like respectable meals <laughs> i i just dude. don't eat healthy but having like having a nice bowl with some meatballs some green beans yep. and some right and some rice Yep. And I'm like, wow, I'm not a man child. <laughs> Dude, I feel that though. We did this, I did the subathon and we just got off the rhythm of getting it. And like the other day, bro, I was like, I had like McDonald's for lunch and then we went to Chick fil A for dinner. And then I, I ordered McDonald's again the next day. And then we had, had Chipotle. And I was just like, I was just like, I feel so disgusting. Like I just feel disgusting. And we had, uh, we had the, the, pork burrito bowl thing tonight which was delicious oh yeah man so good so it's awesome you can get tons of other things as well um like sides and stuff um they have stuff like snack boards pretzel bites uh spice bar nuts they really like to uh go with seasons so there's a lot of like summer focused recipes um it's really good we love them we use them all the time um, so you can go to HelloFresh.com slash podcast16 and use code podcast16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That is HelloFresh.com slash podcast16 and use code podcast16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Thank you for sponsoring this episode. Mm. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Oh God. Um so dude, rare rare just positive vibes coming from Tarkov. Now the community is full blown, you know, when wipe, when wipe, when wipe, when wipe, which is fine. But like, man, I like it's it's hard because like this this patch is like everything you and I have been talking about for so long. Not everything, right? But like the, like it's helped the net code so much and we've talked about and it's so funny because like it's kind of flown under the radar like yeah. nobody's really tweeting about it nobody's really making videos about it i feel so strongly a light switch i was such a scrooge i've been such a scrooge on my stream for so on long. my stream playing this game for months bro i've just been like i don't know man just like trying to get through it the raids have been brutal, but like, uh, dude, it just it, a light switch for me. Person, I can't talk. I can't speak to anybody else's experience. Maybe you know you, the servers suck and where you are or whatever. But like, my experience was like a light switch. I'm having fun raids. I feel like I'm performing well. It feels like things are better. I don't feel that like what the hell is going on? Why am I dying? I don't understand. Um, and it's just kind of flying under the radar. So. It's it's it is what it is. I'm I'm just enjoying it, enjoying the fact that I'm enjoying Tarkov for uh like thoroughly for the first time in a while. And then hoping that this is like a building block, right? Because the roadmap was, you know, fixes, unity, and then content. And like the hope my my fear is that we do like a big content patch and it just breaks everything, right? Because they push mm -hmm. the limits where they're like, oh, more PMCs on this map or this, that, and the other, and, and it just goes back backwards. Like I'm really hoping that it isn't. Um, we haven't yet received the like update to the roadmap. Um, they talked about that they were going to do a new roadmap, right? Just like, Hey, you know, we had to push unity, you know, we leapfrogged this, we're going to do a new roadmap. Um, the, the whole conversation around the wipe is, is very confusing because like, we still don't have the unity 2021. That's where some of the optimizations are going to come in. Would they wipe with that? Because there's really nothing else in that. If they don't wipe with that, when would we wipe? Because I don't feel like patch point 14 is close. That's the big one. Like, I still feel like that's got to be far away. Yeah. So it's like people, you know, I, I get it. I get why people ask me when the wipe is, right? Like we're, we're like 10 days away from the longest wipe in Tarkov's history. Like we're close. So I get it. It's, it's wipe time, right? Like I get people asking, but this time, I don't even have like a, I don't know. They've debated us with all these events thinking they're pre-wipe events, but they're not. 
would would they wipe with just the unity or where what's going on with arena so like people keep asking i understand but i'm just like i don't even have a guess i don't have a best guess like you could i could point at a calendar any day between now and december 31st and i think whatever day it is it's just as likely as any other day that we get the wipe like i really don't know at this point um which is just interesting and i don't really care i'm having enough fun playing right now does that make sense like i'm yeah. so you don't need the wipe exactly i'm so genuinely i just so genuinely feel that all i care about in escape from Tarkov right now is stability i just want the game to feel fun so if the wipe is postponed six weeks or three months because they really want this wipe to feel good on day one i'm fine with that because the game feels good right now and i think that like that's i just i'm so tired of freaking invisible player bugs or no occlusion zones on maps like this wipe was brutal this wipe was really hard day one like everybody coming in that's like i just took this wipe off man i'm like i dude smart decision right like i i'm with you buddy so the game feels good right now and i'm like that's all i care about i don't really care when the wipe is or whatever i want to know but i don't really i don't really care somebody dude we had this conversation so it's very similar to the conversation we had with the cheater somebody was like so it was like the sh I know, like I know that all of you streamers know, and I know you just guys signed an NDA, and you can't tell. He was just like I know, I like he was like I I know like you don't have to have the act with me. He's like I know that you're just under NDA and you can't tell us. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, bro, I wish. <laughs> oh, okay. I wish, bro. I was like, you have no idea how many like conversations i have with my wife because i'm like okay if the wife happens around here you know we're trying to we are trying to buy a house like you want to go down to see like we're like trying to plan our life around you know me being able to make content and he's like i know you know you don't have to lie to me and i was like okay dude bro not even not even the people who yeah who, i was like Nikita who actually even know. <laughs> yeah like not, not even the people who uh who you know actually will say they signed an NDA, actually signed an NDA. Yeah. Like, in the, in the same way, like, I've signed a million NDAs. I've done consulting for game devs before. Um, I have had an NDA at basically every software company I've ever worked at. Yeah. I was a part of the test ETS, and I tested for, like, 45 seconds one day. Yeah. Um, but, like, it, it must be, like, the terms of service. It was, like, some digital thing you hit accept on. It wasn't, like... No, not that that's not like a real NDA. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I feel like that's almost as. It's not water. It's, like in this, it's, it's the same way as like you break the terms of service. Yeah. You know, like when, when I sign an NDA, in every situation I've ever signed an NDA, I expect to be sued. Yeah. If I break the NDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't expect to be sued, yeah. whether it was me or whether it was some written. I'm not not saying anybody should go and you know sue anybody, but a total side note because I was kind of thinking about that when we were talking about the logical thing from a couple of weeks back oh, about yeah. the NDAs, and I was just like, I never signed an NDA, and I'm like, well, maybe I clicked through a yeah. thing at one point. I'm pretty it sure it was like a sign where I had my signature. Correct. I don't think it was that, but I do think it was a really clear. And like user license ex agreement. Accept, like, I accept this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, we can actually kind of, like, leapfrog to that. Because speaking of which, um, Tarkov did another... Um, they did this a while back, and we talked about it a little bit, but they did it again. They tweeted yesterday. Yep, they tweeted yesterday. This was the tweet, so I'm not freaking breaking anything. For the past few months, there have been ongoing testing of upcoming updates on the early test servers. Currently, the testing of a new matching server system is available. We invite all participants who received uh, access to the ETS to join the server, join the testing, and leave their feedback on the Discord server. Uh, we thank players who are currently involved. Your participation and feedback allow us to quickly fix bugs that are discovered during the testing. <laughs> so they did that again, which we that had was feedback that that had been directly given to them um, about like, let us know what's being tested. Let us know what you're working on so that the players can understand that you guys have a focus on fixing. So like my criticisms of this and, and what came out of this is, is first I'm going to acknowledge that like I've said that before I've given that feedback. Like 
If the players know what you're working on, that's a good thing. This is them doing that. Uh, currently testing a new matching server system. That's awesome. I'm assuming that means how long it takes us to match into the raids and a new system for matching would be sick. However, this has kind of like uh, spawned a, not a movement, but I've just been seeing a bunch of people talk about it online since about like the question of like, why is why is the ETS under NDA? Like, why, why is it even under an NDA? Like, a lot of people are quote tweeting this tweet being like, please just let us talk about it and play it and stream it. It's not like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I kind of feel the same way. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I kind of feel the same way. I feel like a lot of the things that Nikita kind of wants to reserve the right to be able to like surprise. Yeah people you know like with the airdrops and stuff but even that i don't think was even on I, and again i'm not speaking as from i'm not violating the nda because i don't even know this information yeah. i was not privy to any of this stuff i didn't even pr participate um yeah. but like i don't recall anybody ever saying after the fact that it was in yeah. the test server didn't they just surprise us with that yeah. so clearly they have like features that they don't yes. publicly put that's just, just that's my weird. thing that's my thing too is yeah i don't i don't, I don't want to i don't want to break anything or talk about anything I'm, i shouldn't use your brain do you think if some super secret awesome new feature came to the ets do you not think that would, it would that be would it would be Someone on Reddit would in that. seven days, in seven seconds. Sorry, in seven seconds, that would be on Reddit, right? Like, it, yeah. Just, uh, so, like, so if they're going to be testing things on the ETS that they've told us are features that are coming, I don't really understand keeping that under an NDA. You know what I mean? Like, um, so I mean, we, we can talk about things. We can talk about things that we know that, that like we don't even have to use hypotheticals. They tweeted out they were testing 13.1 on the ETS. That was the first time they tweeted that. They were like, we're testing 13.1 on the ETS. And we had a roadmap saying what was coming in 13.1. And then a few weeks later, it came. Right? You know what? It, Why you know did what that it is? need to be under NDA? I got the answer for you. Because they don't want people, content creators, making videos about how dog shit it is. If it's. <laughs> It's, it's about it's about content creators. They don't give a fuck about some random dude posting on Reddit and talking about it with his friends on Discord. They don't care, right? What they care about is some content creator who, and I'm saying like generally, yeah. I'm not actually, I don't, it's, I'm, I'm not like hinting at anybody in particular. Yeah. Just anybody making a video saying, you know, uh, they're testing this and it sucks. You know what I mean? Like they, they have the new net yeah, code the, the and new it's audio broken. System is yeah. garbage and yeah. it's totally so maybe because then it's just drama and pressure and whatever. And here's my thing. Here's and that's and they're and they, so they would not sue random Joe Blow, you know, and I'm not a lawyer. So if you're random Joe Blow, you know, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I'm not a lawyer. I just realized this isn't legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. Isn't his name Jonathan Blow? Didn't we have him? Would he, <laughs> yeah, would did, he be yeah. Joe Blow? <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, but like, I, I, I highly doubt. I just don't see them suing some rando, you know. Yeah. For but at the same, but I do see them, you know, doing a DMCA or filing a cease and desist against. Yeah. Insert streamer they don't like here for whatever reason, putting a YouTube video out, right? So yeah, at least there they have a little bit more legal ground. Yeah, I don't know. They, I mean, with, I get at it. The end of the, at the end of the day, dude, they, they like, and this is totally fine. They're allowed to be this way for sure. For but sure, they like, they like to have control over yeah, everything. A narrative, and part of that is a little bit of cultural stuff, you know, where it's like yeah. they want control over the information. They have the right to control the information. They do. I am not a, you know, personally not a big fan of. You know, the whole, like, I'm going to give you information and ask that you not, you know, talk about the information Yeah. while at the same time putting you in a position where people are going to constantly ask about the information and you can't even hint that you know about the information. So you basically have to lie, right? Like, yeah. I, I just don't like, 
I want to if I shouldn't talk about it, then don't tell me. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. No, I, 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 I get that, man. And I don't know. And that could be it. But like, here's the deal. I think it's it's. I think it's kind of a non issue. I think it would have been a non issue if they launched the ETS outside of NDA, if they launched ETS with no NDA, that how many years ago they did it and they just tested these types of features. We're testing a new matchmaking system, right? You hop on the matchmaking doesn't go any faster. Okay. It's not working or you hop on and the matchmaking is going super fast and you're like, Oh my God, I'm super excited for this new update. When is it coming? I, I think that if you're going to be testing features that have already been announced, you announced you're going to be doing this feature. It already falls under the column of we're not trying to surprise you. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I don't see why it would be under NDA. I believe that. But what I also believe is that it's too late. If they lifted the NDA, it would be so much. It would be so dramatic. You know what I mean? It would be such a dramatic thing that they lifted the NDA and everybody would get in there and it would just like be such a weird thing. It's like. It was just like all unnecessary drama. Like they could have just not had the NDA in the first place and it would have been fine. And, uh, and, and whatever. And I, I saw some, I saw a couple people be like, why even have test servers for a beta game? It's like, I don't care what you call like the, the word beta means nothing. It means nothing. It just means nothing. It's just four letters and they mean nothing. It's a meaningless thing. Test servers are actually amazing. And I would love to see them be utilized more because whatever it is, beta, alpha, 1.0, pre-version, vertical slice, whatever you want to call Tarkov, it's a game that's live. It's a game that people can play anytime they want. So having an environment where you can push something out and have a smaller subset of your players test it and oh no, we deleted everybody's accounts or everybody's money got deleted as a bug, as a result of this thing. It just doesn't matter, right? In in the test environment. So like, I think the test servers are awesome. I think the test servers were actually something that we and many people talked about before they had test servers that we wish they had test servers, but then they made it kind of like hard to get excited about because... You know what I mean? It, most people want to play Tarkov. They want to advance their characters. And then if they want to test something out on the ETS servers, they have to do that outside of that time. And they can't talk to anybody about it or they can't post about it or whatever. And it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just that in this, in this case, the problem is, is that it's just a bunch of ambiguous, clumsy terminology. Yeah. Like, like if you just ask me, ignoring... All of the caveats, all of the little asterisks, all of yeah. the whatever. I would say that Tarkov is a shipped game. Yeah. That that we it's done. It's it, it might as well be 1.0, and we have a beta test server as the ETS servers for like yeah. a limited like that universe. If that was what we called it, would make more sense. Uh, conceptually on yeah. paper, however you want it, it would make more sense than what we have now, which is, which I understand it, part of it is being a little pedantic, but part of like, but I kind of get that there is a little bit of like, there's a little bit to that argument that I kind of like can sympathize with Yeah, the whole idea that you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't say this is a beta. You have to expect all kinds of issues yeah. and all kinds of problems. And you have to be okay with paying, but while at the same time paying three, two or three times what, you know, you might play for a 1.0 shipped finished game. Yeah. While at the same time, there's another server that has things that there are testing. Yeah. It, it's like, it's a f identity crisis. Yeah. And it's it's awkward. Yeah. And like, so I kind of I get it to to whatever extent. For sure. I I just don't give a f yeah. because ultimately it's people fighting over the like words that yeah it's like so, the nomenclature. It's so meaningless. It's so meaningless. The people that get so butthurt. This isn't a beta. This isn't this is an alpha. This is basically a play test. There's core features of the game that are missing, and and a beta is supposed to be a finished product that you're just testing or something. And then people on the other side be like, this game is basically 1.0 and we're just getting DLCs and updates. I don't care. Like I can see merit 
to every single one of those arguments. And I agree with you where like, I feel like it is more of an identity crisis on the BSG side because they label it as a beta and what X, Y, or Z, and they've been having it for so long. But at the end of the day, I just don't, I just like, at the end of the day, almost every single player would agree with how to move forward with the game, whatever we call it. So it seems like such a non-argument, like to, to argue about what to call it. And then if somebody wins and goes, it's a beta, okay, it's a beta. We would all agree like, okay, well, these things need to be fixed. The audio needs to be better. The netcode needs to be better. And then they should, uh, so it's like, we all agree on what's after this argument. Why is this argument a thing, right? You know what I mean? So I think, I think <laughs> what you call it changes what's acceptable and what the expectations are. I guess are. that's, that's true. That makes, that's why yeah. people care. If, if this is a beta, then I'm okay with all of this jankiness. Yeah. But also, I don't want to pay triple price. For sure. But also, I want to be able to test and have access to future things. Yeah. But also, I might also be okay with, you know, maybe signing an NDA. Yeah. But also, don't ban us for, you know, like, quote-unquote, exploiting if there's, like, some bug that makes it so that you duplicate yeah. money and you accidentally do it because it's funny and whatever, and yeah. then you get banned. Like, that makes sense. just That's a be good point. consistent about what the fucking what you're communicating yeah so i and the, none of this i care about yeah i like, know i but I'm, i understand I'm what just, you're saying i'm just trying to explain i think why i think the art the argument has merit and it's a hill that i that nobody yeah, should die and on i'm just yeah exactly <laughs> that's a good point i think what you call it definitely set you know set your expectations um, yeah, like debate club in high school i would be vehemently excited to be to have this be my final project in debate club in high school and and i would never be interested in having the conversation ever again after that yeah 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 <laughs> um yeah so just consider it a pre-alpha then it's just an it's a pre-alpha um anyways no it's a hot mess it's you a should hot, know hot what, mess what it is yeah what it is is there's no way to describe what it is because it is a, a mangled up jumble of all of the things it is tarkov spaghetti so take it or leave it. Yeah, and and quit bitching about it's, it's quit bitching about the way it's worded and whatever because like it's, it's been out long enough that you should know what you're getting into. Yeah, there's if alpha, you ask literally there's anyone. beta, there's spaghetti. This is a spaghetti game. All that being said, it, as an idiot, self-proclaimed, <laughs> <laughs> self-proclaimed, I think the ETS is the most successful when what's being tested on the ETS is foundational changes and optimizations to the game. Mother flipping Oculus audio would have been great to have an un NDA'd just like if they just like tweeted it, they were like on the test servers, we, we, you know, customs has Oculus audio. Maybe they did this once again. I don't even know a lot about the ETS. So if I'm, I'm not, I don't know. So if I'm breaking anything, I don't know. Cause I didn't test any of this. They could have done that and then everybody could have played it and been like provided, I'm sure, really valuable feedback. You know what I mean? The new the new matching system that they're doing, 13.1, which was the new net code. Like in my in my idiot opinion, the test servers work best testing those types of things. Not like here's the new map. Like, I don't think that they're doing that. I don't think they would do that. Like, you know what I mean? Here's the new gun. Like they've, the guns always work when they put new guns in. You know what I mean? So like what works best on the ETS is like, optimizations, new technologies, new systems for doing, you know, increasing FPS or making the audio better. And those type of things, in my opinion, also like the NDA is just so meaningless for, because it's not, nothing is being spoiled. I don't, I just don't, I don't understand it. If the ETS was utilized to its fullest extent, it would be all things that would just are just so not even close to requiring an NDA. I don't I don't really understand it. That's kind of my thought. Wh whatever, right? Like I'm not trying to start a movement or a change.org petition to like get them to lift the NDA. They're gonna do whatever they want to do, and that's fine. I think I think the 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 feedback we have given BSG on this podcast many times, a feedback I'll continue to give is what type of feedback do you want from the community? Tell us that and then give us the opportunity to give that feedback, right? Like we went on the tirade a few weeks nope. ago about like bug reports and like, do they, they want their cake and they want to eat it too. They, they want to provide the ability to give feedback 
and then provide no mechanism and then ignore the feedback. Yeah, I don't know. So because it, it's the same thing with the bug reporting. Do bug reports matter? I don't know. It doesn't feel like they matter with how hard it is to report a bug and how many bugs I can report in a day and how unintuitive and it how is. They respond to and how they reports. respond to bug reports. So it, it just goes back to like, if you don't want bug reports, you know what I mean? Then just communicate that. If you do, give us a better way. So it's kind of the same thing with the ETS. That, that's I see it as an identity crisis as well. You have test servers. I, I would imagine... Because by definition, you want things to be tested and feedback to be had. But then it's in such a way where it's like really hard to get into the ETS. I don't even know if they're taking new applicants. It, you know, it's just it's just like weird. You can't talk about it. You can't share it. Why? I don't know. It's just like that's that's the kind of the feedback. Once again, it's like what type of feedback do you want? And, and does the player have the opportunity to give that feedback? Maybe they only want 100 people in the ETS. Maybe they want to keep the circle small. I don't know. And that's why they put it on the NDA. It's just like, I'm very aware of, I don't see the entire picture, but the picture I see just doesn't make a lot of sense. And it feels like it causes unnecessary confusion and drama and frustrations. Um, There's no picture because there is no picture. They're, they're winging it like a lot of other things. And yeah. it's like, that's okay. Yeah. But I mean, like here, here's what I would do in their situation, which I've been, I begged them to do forever. Yeah. And I lost interest, you know, um, this is absolutely what would be the perfect thing, the perfect strategy. You try to get together maybe about 50 people that are like known vetted folks. I'm sure it would be like 60% content creators mm -hmm. that are like respected in the community that, you know, whatever. And then like 40% some other community members they might yeah. be mods in the discord or for streamers or yeah. they're active on like whatever maybe they have to sign up and there's a interview i don't know whatever but a small group they literally signed legit real legal and we will sue you ndas um and what you do is you say okay saturdays every saturday 3 p.m eastern we are going to have an update. Everybody get together and we have a game jam. And we all test everything out. Everybody is in a Discord call. We're all experiencing a whole bunch of stuff. You play for two or three hours. Before that happens, you should have an idea of what is being tested. Yeah. What are things to look out for? What are things to pay attention to? Have You should prepare some questions. You know, whatever. Yeah. Like a focus group yeah and and then after you play for the two hours there's a one hour call after the fact that's a debrief yeah. where every there's two people with clipboards that work for bsg that are sitting there typing taking notes whatever and everybody's like i want to do this and this felt weird i want to do this and yeah Oh, and then it, because if I was a part of that, I'd be able to say like, oh, you know, you guys maybe should think about adding the double tap button press for this thing because it, it's not really intuitive. Like yeah. some of those really simple things that yeah, that can make a massive difference. And yet, if I were to submit a bug report or like yeah. email or put into the Discord, it would just get buried. Yeah. Like, but but as soon as I was like, the kinds of ideas that make a difference in that they are issues that are experienced by lots of people. When you have a group call, what you end up having yeah. is I I what I, I would say, hey, I think you guys should do this very minor tweak with like control clicking over stuff. It would make looting really much faster. Yeah. And then everybody would go, holy, f yeah, 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 yeah. And then it was like, clearly that's like a crowd favorite, right? Yeah, yeah. Someone else would be, hey, whenever I went over and engaged with scabs on this part of streets, the game bogged down to two FPS. Oh, yeah, I experienced that too. Mm -hmm. You get so much more valuable feedback by having a group being able to bounce off each other. Then they get other ideas on how to make things better. Yep. And what BSG can take all of that in and then do what they want with it. Yep. They would get a thousand times more valuable information. Yep. A thousand times just more information in general. Yeah. They would get far less dumb information. Yeah. And then you'd also be able to get people into the, the, the swing of learning how you test things, how to give feedback, that whole process. That's just... Instead, I'm sure they say, hey, there's an update on the server. Go check it out. And a bunch of people probably play it. And then they go to school or whatever. Yeah. And then nothing comes from it. It's yeah. similar to the bug reports. They got the bug report. And it's like, 
well, if you don't bug report, then what do you expect us to do? It's probably the same philosophy with the yeah. ETS. I'm guessing it's, well, if you didn't say anything, it must all be fine. Yeah. That's kind and of... And it's never fine. It's never fine. That's kind of how Star Citizen does it. They have their public... It's called PTU, Public Test Universe. But they have... So they have what's called Evocati, which is like a really small group of people. In Star Citizen world, everything is money. It's like if you've spent whatever amount on the game and you subscribe or something, you get into Evocati. I don't know. But it's like dedicated people. It's a small group of dedicated people that like are really, really, really into the project that are going to test. That is under NDA. Nerd. Yeah. That is under NDA. So they'll push an update to Evocati. They're the first people that get to test it. That's the small focus group of people that provide a bunch of feedback. Then Sounds it, like a pasta dish. Then it gets, Evocati. Yeah, Evocati. Then it gets pushed to the public test universe where anybody can, if they want to, then test it. And that's a great way to test like scale. If there's a new network thing or something and we want, we want 10,000 people, we want 20,000 people, and then it goes live to the patch. And sometimes bugs persist all the way through, you know what I mean? But it's like something like that, where if there was like a super small amount of people that were under like a really, you know, we'll sue you, you're trusted in the community NDA that can test new features, then you can push stuff to the ETS that and make that public, make that not under NDA, because then you could get scale of something and then you push it out. And you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, I don't know. BSG is the husband that goes to marriage counseling and is on their phone the whole time not paying attention. <laughs> Like, honey, I care. I want things to change. But it's like, well, then do something about it. Prove it. Like, show me. Like, what are oh you talking about? God. Like, I, I, I think, I genuinely think that they, like, Nikita's like, I want feedback. But then at the same time, like, doesn't, none of them, none of them invest the time or the effort or the thought into actually getting valuable feedback. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Because I, I, once again, I think that this year they have shown that they're willing to listen to feedback. There was like the, the recoil thing, that recoil patch, like that came from feedback. Um, of course, down their throat. No, no, I know. Well, let me finish though, because because I have a I have a butt to this. I, like there was the the recoil patch and 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 everything, the movement that well that changed, like your video, that was huge, Trey's video. They've been more communicative of of changes, like They've been doing graphs and like patch notes with more smaller patches and saying like, here's the things we changed. We changed the money for this thing. Even them, even them tweeting out the ETS. Once again, that was feedback I gave. I don't know if that was on the podcast or not. I'm not saying they listen to me. I think other people, but I'm saying I was in the boat of people that was like, tell us what's on the ETS because then we know what you're testing and then we can know you can show us that you're working on the things that need to be worked on. So I think they're willing to accept feedback, but I think what you, what you said earlier is is absolutely right. They don't have any sort of real good pipeline to get good feedback and get that feedback to the right person. It's either no feedback and like random ass, you know, angry tweets, or it's like weird, you have to do this and then open this form and then, you know, log in with this and then go in the ARG and then you can submit the bug report. You know what I mean? It's just like, it, it, it's so convoluted that nobody does it so it's like if there was a better pipeline of like who at bsg needs to hear the feedback and what's a way that you everybody knows that you can get valuable feedback i mean that was your idea right your idea around the ETS was like get like your idea was around the thought of what's valuable feedback feedback is cool but what's valuable feedback? And so you were your idea was a reverse engineer of that. Well, the most valuable feedback is going to come from a smaller group of people, not a larger group of people, in a setting where they could have more access to it and have more access. So that whole idea was a reverse engineered of what's the best type of feedback. That how you came to that conclusion of that idea is what BSG needs to do. Feedback, whatever. Everybody can get feedback. Everybody's tweet is feedback. Everybody's highlight video is feedback. Everybody's, you know, I, you know, I make these videos where I'm like, I think the voodoo is sucks and here's how I would fix it. That's feedback. But they need to identify what's good feedback and what's the type of feedback we want. And from that identification, reverse engineer a better pipeline. Because I do believe, once again, I, I feel bad because sometimes I do believe that somebody out there at BSG is trying. They're like, oh, we're tweeting better things or we're, we're, we, we changed this thing. But then it just it's just like such this weird wave where like, oh, they listened to this, but that was kind of weird. They need, to, they need to know what type of feedback they want and they need to create a better pipeline to get that feedback. 
so that they can listen to the right feedback. Bro, it's, there's a there's a common thread to literally this and every other problem. They are a bunch of gun nut, talented animator dudes with game development experience. Period. Yeah. yeah. They don't know how to do any of the other sh that you need to do as a giant AAA kind of pseudo game development yeah. company, right? I'm sure they probably have HR nightmares. I'm sure they probably have weird holiday parties, I, whatever. <laughs> Actually, they're, they're probably rad. They but, are. But like all of the other sh involved, yeah. it, it's like, like I've ran my own company before. Yeah. And it was like, oh, there's all this other shit. I don't know what the f to do about any of this. Yeah. And you got to wing it and figure it out as you go. They they started to make a game and they're like, we got to get feedback. How do we do that? I don't know. Uh, You know, Sven, go work on it, right? And it's yeah. like, yeah, he's not an expert on it. He probably just came up with some ideas on the toilet the next yeah. morning before he went in. None of it was like proper focused professionals who know what the f they're doing making informed decisions about what's right and what's yeah. good and what's best practices and yada 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 yeah they're just winging it dude they don't they don't know what they're doing in so many in so many facets and they didn't know what they were doing with networking or anti-cheat they didn't know what they were doing with a million other stuff and they've slowly gotten better with a few yeah. of those things yep um because you can't do something for six years and not you know get yeah. a little bit better at it but what they haven't been doing that whole time is a whole lot of they've gone through enough people and yeah enough periods of like ups and downs when yeah. it comes to communicating that they had they still have no have no idea how to communicate yeah they they're they're changing every day kind of what they're talking how what their what's their tone you know one day we've got all of this great information coming from BSG then we have 6 months of radio silence yeah. and then Nikita tweets out like I need a black dark web assa assassin to take out logical solutions. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm paying Bitcoin, right? Like it just, it's all over the place, dude. Yeah. No. Yeah. They're I, just I, it. I get it. And, and, and the thing is, is that like, I don't think they need to like, this isn't star citizen, right? Like star citizens, you know, my grandchildren aren't going to play star citizen 1.0. I don't think they need to create, like, because because I think here's a counter argument. It's like they're trying to get to 1.0. They don't need to re. They don't need to create systems and and this server and that server and this server. And and I don't think that they need to. I think that they can like. I think it just comes down to like once again identifying what they want and creating a better way of getting it. I don't think they have to create all these systems. I don't. It doesn't. It's it's a lot less complicated than I think people think it is. I just. Oh, I just I think that the identity crisis is over there, I, and I and I think it's what you said. They're trying to figure out how to do this as people who did not expect their game to ever have two hundred thousand concurrent viewers, millions of copies sold, and I can empathize with that. But at the same time, it's like I also want to provide my feedback, right? And so, I just think, yeah, if they knew what they wanted and and communicated that, it could be provided better. I don't know. You just call me, okay? Just I can help. <laughs> um. Anyways. Anyways. Uh. Oh. Uh, oh. So. Before we move on, we've got like a tiny, tiny little bit of other talk stuff to talk about. But before we move on, I do want to take a second and thank the second sponsor of this week's episode, and that is Bird Dogs. You know, to put it simple, bird dogs make you look good. This is a brand we've been working with recently. These guys are hilarious. Uh, they make uh, shorts and pants that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Um, and so they've got all sorts of pants and swimsuits and swimwear and shorts. Their kind of thing is that they make like shorts that like have like underwear built into them, like the underlining, just really quick on and off. Um, they're a real kind of like goofball type of company. Like their website is phenomenal. The names of their products are impeccable. We've got some uh, Uncle Bucks. Yeah. I need to get me some of those the, too. The, the the khaki the khaki shorts. Yes, that they're dude. The Lee. I did um, a lot of cocoa. 
bro, I'm all about Al- the, Alfred the, like, Hitchcock's. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, I'm all about the, like, the the nice-looking clothes yeah. that fool you into thinking that it's, like, dress-up when yep. they feel like sweatpants. Yes. That's yes. Just, that, we have that's the technology. That's a genre of clothes that I feel like is new. Yeah, like, we... Because before, it was always you look good and are uncomfortable. Yeah. Or you're comfortable and look like twitch stream yes yes a hundred percent and we have the technology now uh and they they do a lot of stuff in there they've got like uh anti uh sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry the way that they're cut make them look uh really nice and look like the fancy but because the material and it's stretchy it's so much more comfortable than stuff that's normally kind of like a tailored fit and that's kind of their thing look good feel good make it comfortable make it cool um, so, uh, yeah, they've got, and well, like we said, they've got, um, swimsuits as well. I think they call it, um, they're in mean, a cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki. Their pants look really, really nice. Their joggers are sick as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so you can go to birddogs.com slash pool and enter promo code pool for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That is birddogs.com slash pool for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Thank you, bird dogs, for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> Bro, every time we do a bird dog sponsor, I always do. You know, you didn't watch Letter Kenny. Oh, yeah. No, I don't watch. There's, I haven't watched it. There's uh, That's where all the Rickyisms little... come from, though, right? Isn't Ricky a character on Letter Kenny? That might be Trailer Park Boys. That might be Trailer Park Boys. I only say that because I've never seen Trailer Park Boys, and I don't think Ricky... Okay. That doesn't sound familiar, and I've seen all of... It's all Letter water King. under the fridge. Anyway, <laughs> um, you guys will have to... I don't know. Now I'm worried that maybe I'm missing something. Someone's going to be like, no, that definitely is Letter King. Anyways. Uh, bird dog. There, there's, there's a scene in one of the episodes where they the guys are wearing... Like these, they're they almost look like they're exercise, like bicycle kind of shorts. And they talk about how they've got a little pocket for your twig and berries. And the whole time, every time they talk about it, they're like, "You just, you just put them right in." You just, and every time you say that, That's... I always go, and I'm like, "Someone's gonna get that reference every time. Oh, someone's God. gonna get it, and it's not gonna be Jesse." No, um, <sighs> I think it is. Trailer Park Boys, what that I was thinking of with the Rickyisms and all the little. Anyways, uh, uh, which I haven't seen a single episode of either show, and I'm sorry. But Leonard Kenny is worth watching. Okay, good to know. That's one of those ones where you like if you watch, a, like I remember seeing like a YouTube short or something way back in the day. It was like one of the short little skits, and I remember being like, "What is this weird like, <laughs> m- kind of like Mormon?" like autistic like i'm like what is this character <laughs> like i just don't understand who the character yeah. and then you just realized that like it, it it was just like happened to be the the way that the guy dressed and like his mannerisms what i'm talking about is some people will know when they're throwing the baseball back and forth talking about i can't remember exactly but it might involve butt stuff <laughs> i'm and, and and it's just like they're throwing the baseball back and forth. I'm like, it, it gave me vibes similar to what was the movie with the really awkward geeky dude? Napoleon Dynamite. His, wow. Yeah. I didn't even have to talk about you, like brother. Tupperware sales. It, it gave me like Napoleon Dynamite kind of vibes where I'm like, what? Like, what is this show? And it's nothing like that. It really <laughs> isn't. Um. But in, in like a good way. Yeah. Like, like I actually like Napoleon Dynamite, but you, you ever just watch like a trailer or you watch a thing and you're like, that wasn't what the show. Yeah. It gives you it gives you the wrong impression um, of what the game is. And which which honestly is the case for so many of like my favorite forms of media. Yeah. Whether it was the Outer Wilds. Oh, um, yeah. 
that was one of those ones that like just completely different vision. When I saw the game, I'm like, I have a picture in my head of what this game is and I don't want to play it. Yep. And then I played it and it's nothing like that. And it was amazing. Yeah. Letter Kenny. And like, I have a picture of what the show is like and it was nothing like that. Letter. Kenny. Uh, All right. Yeah, it's, it's worth it's worth checking out. I need another TV show. So I actually might I might start start binging through that. Um, only other Tarkov worthy news is they ended the boss event, which was a womp womp because that was like the best event people we had had in a while, but we got a new event. Veritas. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this peak Tarkov event where Nikita invokes everybody's NDAs and yes. you, we've all, we all got calls and emails from, from his lawyers. lawyers. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. We got a new quest called like under the influence or chemical effect. I don't remember what it was called. It doesn't matter. And you have to kill 30 PMCs. Wow. Already starting off with, yeah. with a, with a, fucking classic, maybe, with a, fa with a fan favorite. Maybe kill 20. 30 PMCs. Okay. 20 or 30 PMCs. Cool. What time of day? Where? And yeah. with what? Tell me. Well, I can't wait. Well, under the influence of the Abdoblos stem. Okay. Abdoblos 1, not 2, because there's 2 in the game now. Abdoblos 1. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. They changed the stims. Okay? They changed Abdoblos 1 that when you take it for 30 minutes, you take 1,000% more damage. <laughs> Also, if you die, it resets the quest. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was the event, which, which spawned a, um, a kind of like conversation in the community again because if you have max immunity this is like the third wipe in a row now they've done some sort of event that affects it's a status effect if you have elite level immunity i think it's you have a 50 percent chance or like a 70 percent chance to just not get any negative side effects of anything so a few people completed the quest really early on day one and it's because when they were taking up Doblo stims they weren't getting the plus 1,000 damage. If you take a second one, does it overwrite the first one? Can you just keep taking them until, like, you get a good one? Oh, until you, like, proc the good one? Maybe. I don't know. But uh, but at that point, if you have max immunity, it was basically just kill 20 PMCs in one life, which for some of these Giga Chads, you know what I mean? You put on a Zabralo and a Rist T, and you, you, you can do that. You know, I couldn't do it relatively easy, but some people could. You know what I mean? Just grinding factory. And then that kind of like people were talking about the skills and listen, in my opinion, all seven of the people with max immunity <laughs> have max immunity because they're good enough at the game to, and they play it enough that they could do it, right? Like Glorious did it and he was responding to some people on Twitter because some people were kind of like, you know, he didn't really do it. He didn't deserve it. It's like Glorious could slap me around. At 10, 10 out of 10 times, he's he's just like one of the best in the business. Yes, he had max immunity when he did it. He's probably one of 10 people I would think could do it even without max immunity. So, like, I'm not mad at Glorious. It was just, like, another interesting thing with, this, with the challenge because so few people cared to do it except for the people who got to do it by not engaging with the mechanic right like it was just like it was just so scum like 10 people got this quest done and seven of them had max immunity you know what i mean it was like just such a weird and we went from the boss event into that and everybody was just like bro what the hell so it was weird man oh by the way max immunity uh, I'm, I'm 2000 raids into this wipe. I'm level 66. It's the highest I've ever been in escape from Tarkov. What do you think my immunity level is? I can't even begin to nine. I'm so out of touch. Nine. So I'm guessing that that's just because 
you haven't spent like a full week and a half, eight hours a day on stream doing whatever the one thing is over and over again that levels that up, like maybe taking some dumbass stim or it's like snorting to Shanka or like I don't. Yeah, that's the one. It's anything that any stim or food that gives you a negative side effect. So like plus one strength, minus one stress resistance. As long as some soft skill gets affected negatively as a result of something you either eat, drink, or take in a stim, you have to survive the duration of that thing. So max energy gives you plus 10 energy, plus like five hydration. It's like uh, strength plus one for 300 seconds, stress resistance minus one for 300 seconds. You have to take that and live for 300 seconds. And when the negative side effect falls off, you get a little bit of points in immunity. So, um, Glorious tweeted about it. So he just pops like, he pops like three stems at the beginning of every raid, one of which happens to give him this thing. He, and he wipes yeah. every lobby you, and then leaves. Yes. You basically, passively... it's about 4,000 raids of making sure that every single raid you're popping a meldonin or or taking a max energy and surviving through the negative thing every time for 4000 raids which which realistically is like that's why I'm 2000 sure raids you do in that so that so that when they pull this jackass like event quest out of their ass uh, yeah event then you just It'll be slightly easier. It was the same thing. I think it was last wipe. It was one of the recent wipes. They did a pre-wipe event where everybody spawned in with the toxin. Do you remember that? You spawn in and you're gonna die in five. I remember five, hearing about it. And you're you're gonna die in five minutes. And the antidote stims come down in airdrops. And so everybody was fighting over the airdrop. You get the airdrop. You take the stim. You buy yourself five more minutes. Honestly, it was one of the most fun events. It was one of the more creative and fun events that I had seen. But during that event, if you had max immunity, you just didn't spawn with the poison. So you could just like run around and do whatever you want. Everybody else is playing a different game than you. Everybody else is playing a different game than you. And, and it's the same thing. So it's like, and Meldonans are like 50K, 60K on the flea market. And that's the people. So it's like, step one, have, you know, 8 billion rubles to buy 4,000 Meldonans. Step two, never die. Step three, be in your raid for 10 minutes until the Meldonin negative side effects wears off. Do that 4,000 times. When like the when the circle comes in in Warzone, you have like a perk that's like hazmat suit mm -hmm. that just lets you stay outside infinitely just and walk take no around. damage. Yeah. You just walk around while everybody's panicking, running away, right. and you just, yeah. See, it's happening again. You're like full I mean, slideshow right now. What really? Yeah, on my Why? video ninja as well. Like not just in my OBS preview. On my video ninja, you just like just went. F I, I'm getting. Sorry, kids. I'm getting one frame per three seconds. So yeah, man. I don't know. That event is the most scuffed. I don't know whose mouth that came out of. I don't know whose idea that was. But like, the rewards weren't even that good. It's so weird. It's so dumb and just like, I, dude, I don't know. Super weird. And then you know what else is weird is that a part of this event, which I don't even know if you call it an event, was that they also took away. So they made the Abdoblos 1 negative side effects plus 1,000% damage, right? Which effectively means if you get shot, you're dead. If you get shot anywhere in your body, you're dead. Any round yeah. in the entire game. They also... Uh, changed Abdoblos 2 and the Abdoblos... I'm loving that you have to continuously pronounce Ab a word that's Abad inscrutable. I don't know. I don't know the pronunciation. It's um, Come on. Abdoblos. Everybody, let's go. Abdoblos. Yep. I've never... Now I want to Abdoblos... Okay, I'm literally... I typed Ab O-B... I type O-B-L-O-L-O-S-S-O-L-S-S -S -S Tarkov and Google will figure it out. Abdolbos. Abdol Ab is it Abdolbos or Abdolbos? Abdol. I don't know. Abdolbos. 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 Abdolbalobos. Mr. Lovalova. Yeah. 
of Dalbinable Snowman. <laughs> yes. Anyways. Anyways. They changed. I don't know. The wiki. The wiki. I don't know how to view the history of it. Oh, I do. Because. Oh, I do. I know how to view histories of wikis. Uh. Pause champ on the. Oh, I got it. Okay. No Man's Sky video that will come out eight years from now. But man, I'll tell you, I've never gone deeper. Balls deep. History of my life. I dude. believe that with all my heart. I'm oh, trying to solve okay. a goddamn murder. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So, as a part of this event, so the quest is literally kill PMCs under the influence of a double one. That's it. That's the whole quest. That's the whole event. But simultaneously, what they did was they changed Abdoblos two. Now, Abdoblos two in the past gave you eighteen hundred seconds of eighty percent extra damage, except to your head. So Abdoblos 2 was always, that's always how it's been, 80% additional damage. So it was like, it gives you a bunch of buffs and stuff like that, but it was like, dude, 80% extra damage, right? Well, as a part of the event, what they did was they just took that off of Abdoblos 2. So let me read to you what Abdoblos 2 does now. Well, it does the same things, but it just doesn't have any negative side effects anymore. Strength, endurance, perception, and attention, it's plus 20. So basically, if you're playing, it's max. Max all those skills. Increases your maximum stamina and increases your stamina recovery. So it's an SJ6. It's a better SJ6. It gives you four skills close to max if you've been playing. Health, Dude, re health, regen, health regeneration, oh two. It's two propitols for 1,800 seconds. <clears throat> Which is what, 30 minutes? <clears throat> and Bro. increases your weight limit. So it's a mule, an SJ6, two Propitals, and gives you 20 levels in four skills, and now has no negative side effects. Well, so wait a minute. Like, <laughs> could that be part of the part of this event? Is like, are they thinking that it's you crack these two stims every every raid? Yeah, maybe. Like, but still nobody's doing that's... it. But why aren't they doing it? Because wait, everybody. Why? Because you still take a thousand percent extra damage. Oh, oh sorry. No, you mean nobody's nobody's doing the oh the quest? quest. Yeah, nobody's doing the not quest. Not like no. I'm like no, people are taking up to almost one, but not yeah. two. Like, what do you mean? The event. This has to be the new meta. The event. Nobody's doing the event, but they're all taking this new crack. Exactly. Yes. The like, event hit, and stick. and the. Uh, the event hit and Abdoblos 1 went from 40,000 rubles on the flea to 1 million rubles on the flea. And then everybody realized how stupid the event was. And now they're 30,000 rubles on the flea. Abdoblos 2 went from like 60,000 rubles to like 40,000 rubles because nobody cared about them. And then everybody realized that that's the good stim. And now those are 400,000 rubles on the flea. Can you buy them from traders at all? No. Or? You can find them in raid and you can buy them uh, off the flea. If you run uh, streets, I find... A decent amount of them. I mean, so it's, if you've got if you got green key key card or whatever, you're probably rolling in it. Oh right? yeah, or black. Yeah, if you got black key card, you're crushing right now. Oh yeah, 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 it's, yeah black. But like, dude, it. I mean, it's fun. You take that at the beginning of the raid, and it's 30 minutes of two propitols, an SJ6, and a mule. You. I mean, you're flying, bro. You're. It's flying. almost like if the game was just like that. Imagine yeah. if the game was just fun all the time. You could dude. just move. Oh, That'd be wild if the game was just fun, Wouldn't you know, by crazy? default. <laughs> yeah. So, dude, I... It's crazy because I was just, like, praising them. I was like, dude, I was like, guys, this boss event, it's so good. This was, like, one of the best events you guys have done. You love it. And then the patch came, and they were like, we're not taking the event away. And everyone was like, yes! Like, I'm so glad this event's so fun. They kept it up for a few more days. So they took it down, and they were like, Kill PMCs while taking a thousand percent extra damage because we asked you to. I don't know because there was a cool eight second video clip on Twitter. Did I not so scuffed? Like, there's no way that I that after last week's episode, I didn't even snarkily say like, um, like, oh yeah, the next event they're gonna come out with is Bro, gonna be the most. I I must have like I must have had. Imagine said what that. you said it was sounds like, like me. Imagine what you said. We should re review the tape because what if you were like, imagine the next event they just freaking 
10x or 100x the amount of damage you take and somebody was like that's what I, the thing is is that like that sounds exactly like I know, something that's i would what say. say we gotta review the tape bro yo throw the red flag yeah um and like my question is just like who is this event for do you know what i mean like like they they made a video for this event it's for bsg they give the kid the ipad and they're and they're having oh parents, yeah they're having mommy daddy time yeah 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 they're like here off for a bit like, I don't know. Shut it's up, crazy bro. like they like media had to be created for this flavor text like so that 18 people could accomplish yeah, the interns, this task the interns do that like i don't know it it was crazy the, the guy the blizzard guy they hired oh the, my he's the god one, he's the one writing the copy for this oh and also my. passing it through the, the google translate god. he's he's ted that that would be a very bsg appropriate way of of um the uh what's the what's the phrase uh separation of powers no, no. <laughs> Dis distribution of responsibility it'd be yeah. like all right we just hired this like hotshot game designer from blizzard or whatever go make some events yo uh you got time to lean you got time to clean the mop buckets in the closet kiddo how can we how do how can we make our players feel as though we just kick them in the nuts as hard as humanly possible yeah at blizzard we have this philosophy where we're actually kind of dildos half the time too but in a different way but here at uh battle state here games we think about things we think about things a little bit differently oh my god dude i just watched this series where it's what this one of the guys who does he does like critical role and he's like someone who i can tell is like a, a big name in a lot of different communities um that i i'm sure I, Sorry, I'm tired. I just went down like a weird introductory <laughs> rabbit hole. Anyway, there's just this guy that does this thing where it's like he pretends to be the CEO of a bunch of different companies. Like, mm. hi, I'm the CEO for Bank of America. Like, we're going to oh, take all yeah, your fucking yeah. money. Do we need one of those? Like, hi, welcome to Battlestate Games. Bro. It's like the, the, the yes. employee, like, um, what's the word for the thing? Orientation. The employee orientation video. Yes. I think it's Big E. Is is that the guy? The name of the guy who does it on Twitter? He's done it for like Twitch and Apple and like here at Twitch. We, you know, he uh, did. I don't he did so. a huge dude. He, this is someone different, dude. He's done a bunch of those for like Twitch. Here at Twitch, we take half of your money because we're in it together. Like, oh, they're so funny. Anyways. Oh yeah, no. What's his name? The the guy. Uh, he he does a bunch of college humor stuff. Oh okay. What is his? Brennan something. I went. I went on a binge watching like every, every piece of content that this guy made. Um, Brennan Lee Mulligan. Wow, what a name. yeah. He does. He does some D and D stuff on Critical Role. He's done College Humor. Um, but like overnight, I like watched like a ton of his stuff, and he That's seems awesome. like a pretty pretty interesting guy. Totally unrelated, but um, but yeah, man, that that is the Tarkov news and noteworthy things that's it any other uh how's diablo you've been playing diablo still mostly totally 100 percent. yeah 100 fucking percent yeah. balls deep in that. But, like literally balls okay dude deep. it is very rapidly becoming a, a, a tarkov situation in that everybody thinks the world works one way ah and everyone's wrong like this is I a, hate this is a binaural steam audio situation where nobody knew what the hell they were talking about, but it sounded right and it was regurgitated over and over again. You know how long I sat and deliberated? First of all, I've redone the video I'm working on like four different times. Okay. Um, originally it was going to be a beginner's guide, and then I oh, realized yeah. that, that there was it was like an hour long, and I was almost done with it. But I realized that I had to pepper in a bunch of kind of advanced topics okay because i wanted to like it just fit when i'm talking about yeah, everything yeah, yeah, yeah. and i cover some of the foundational stuff it like makes a lot of sense to then cover some of the more advanced stuff but the hard part is that what i was doing was i was watering down advanced concepts mm. with 35 minutes of the most basic beginner here's how an item is named you know what i mean like that yeah. no veteran is going to watch while at the same time being like i promise if you keep watching there's going to be interesting stuff in here yeah. that you're going to learn from so i was like watering down 
the beginner content and bogging down the discussions about the more advanced stuff. And then in having all of these conversations, because I'm always previewing shit on stream. Yeah. I'm always, you know, talking to, because I get excited about what I'm working on and I want to like, I want to geek out about it. Yeah. And then I realized that nobody has any idea how anything works <laughs> in this game. And yet everybody is completely and utterly like, like they are, they, they just know this is the way things work. Yeah. And they'll straight up tell you two plus two equals five. And then, and then three people will say, Oh, but what about this, this, this? And they'll go, Oh yeah, yeah. Two plus two equals five. And then everybody goes, Oh, okay, cool, man. Thank you. And I'm like sitting here like, what? Like, no. And then, and then I go and search for something. And then a video pops up with a guy saying two plus two equals five. And then a bunch of people all commenting saying, wow, dude, I used to think two plus two equals seven, but now yeah. it equals five. And someone's like, no, it actually equals seven. Check out this Reddit post. And I see a Reddit post where someone's like two plus two equals nine, dude. And I'm like, nobody has any idea. Everybody. So yeah, I hate to do the Veritas trope of, hmm, let me tell you <laughs> how you're wrong. Hmm, let me tell you, let me correct you. Like, but yes. like, I can't help it when when people just walk around saying, you know, like two plus two is we seven. didn't land on the moon. I, I There's only so many times I can hear that before I'm like, OK, let's have a conversation. Here's how I know we landed on the moon. OK, I so get it. I get so it. So basically. Oh, and then part of what is making me pivot was your amazing title idea. Hey, -o. Oh, yeah, because this fits even better for this type of... So what I ended up doing was I had two videos crammed into one. Yeah. And I was getting more and more upset, annoyed, and passionate that all the veterans don't know what's going on either. Yeah, 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 They're yeah. They're just so wrong about the most basic... You know, it's like what the equivalent, the Tarkov equivalent is they're saying you never want to use 855A1. Yeah. There's ne never pick it up. Never use it. You you need 995. That's what you want to look for. You need 995 and you need HKs. So yeah. if you're new, you want to start looking for HKs right now. Yeah. It's just, it's like, yeah. no, that's not helpful. Good advice. Like It's like when uh, way, way, way back in the day, it's been a long time, but like, remember when everybody was like, pen was the most important thing? Like at all costs, it was like 70 pen. It's all about pen. Pen's more important than damage. Like, because it was easy to just kind of say, like, yeah, you want something with the highest pen possible. And then everybody was like, people want seven damage, rule. 90 pen, let's go. And everyone was like, we had to be like, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? But yeah, you're right. People want to rule. That's, and, and, and one of the biggest problems is there's like five different rules that yeah. people say. And every one of them is 42% correct. Yeah. Or correct but, but in a certain if, context. But it, but if you understand the way that the systems work and the yeah. way, then you would recognize that none of them are are true. And if you think that way, you're just reinforcing that you don't understand how the system actually works. Yeah, that's your Sam. Um. So basically, I've kind of pivoted from the whole idea of like you're playing Diablo wrong, which like top tier title but didn't apply to like you're a beginner yeah but also so I, what i ended up doing and like i rewrote I've, I've literally redone i have the video that's like an hour long and i like took like sections moved them out wrote a script redid a bunch of voiceover to make it fit yeah and yeah then like that doesn't work really so then i took out like a chunk of that dragged everything over oh moved it all over here God, put it, and, and like four times and now it's um, you do not understand wait, what was it? It's like you do not understand uh Diablo items or something like that. It was oh, basically yeah. just straight up being like you don't understand. Yeah. And it starts off with a pop quiz. What's the you know, such and such and such a thing? Is it A? Is it B? And I'm like, do I want to do a Google Doc just so I can gather the data so so that when everybody oh. who's like, I thought that all along, even though I've not when I ask people. The only people that get any of the questions right 
on any of the questions I ask are the ones that have been in my stream listening to me yeah, ranting about yeah, it for the last week. Yeah. You ask anyone else and they'll give you one of three incorrect responses. Yeah. That's dope. And it's it's infuriating because then I have to sit and listen to the bad advice given to people that is an oversimplification that all it does is reinforce a, a lack of understanding in the underlying systems that are important to your success in the game. Yep. Um, Bro. So you got to. Oh, dude. Then you got to get Asmongold to react to it. That so would that's be... the thing, because now it's a little bit more like you don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it starts off with a little bit of a quiz. And the way that the quiz is designed is it literally takes every every trope, every preconceived notion that, that players have, and it just puts it out there. It's like, should you ever use 855A1 or should you always use 995? And it's like, of course it's going to be always, you know, like... <laughs> I'm I'm hoping. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not hoping because of course I want people to like know the right answer, but like what my expectation is and what would be the perfect like landing of this yeah. would be if Asmongold goes or a bunch of people go and they take the test, and these people who are veterans who know what they're doing and are very good at these games and are super smart, yeah, realize they can't answer a single question. Yeah. They can't answer a single one. They might know these systems, but they don't know the systems yeah and there's a difference between i'm good with ballistics right okay i'm good with ballistics i know that like 995 has more pen than 855a1 that has more pen than 856a1 it's a tracer and yeah. you know but but if i say okay well if you have a level five armor at 50 percent durability and you shoot it with bp round and it fragments how much damage is our thorax going to take if you know then you go oh 17.4 damage yeah now you're not required to know that to play or have fun in the game yeah but what that does is it demonstrates that these people who think they know and understand it's it's simple right it's simple Le 60 uh or um you know 30 pen ammo can never penetrate class 5 armor it's like well no there's always a statistical chance. It might be 1% when it's full durability, but let's say they got in a fight with scavs and it's exactly. at 10% durability. Yep. Well, now it's going to pen. So then when the person who has the class five armor gets shot and they go, what the f dude, I got killed with PSO. The game's f broken. And it's like, no, you just don't understand how it works. Exactly. Yep. So when people say the, 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 the biggest thing um, with Diablo, the, the, it's all about itemization and they, they, it's their fault. Because what they have is, at some point, as you progress, there are sacred items. It's like the new items that are like another tier, right? Okay, yeah. That's when you get to like the third difficulty. Once you get to the fourth difficulty, suddenly now you start getting the ancestral items. Oh, okay, yep. And so, and the thinking is, well, ancestral, it's a different color. It's all shiny. It looks better. The numbers are bigger. They're just better. The problem is, is that if, if... The stats on them were categorized like this is sacred and this is ancestral. You could easily say you probably just want to avoid picking up ancestral and pick up or avoid uh, sacred, you know, or, yeah, sorry, pick uh, up. sacred and pick up ancestral. Yeah. But instead, they're like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are ancestral items that are literally worse than some sacred items. And the biggest thing is that sacred items, uh, 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 like the, the top end of sacred items, are indistinguishable from the best in class ancestral they will have exactly the same stats the the thing is that ancestral and sacred they are labels that if they remove them from the game nothing would change because they don't do anything yeah 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 there's like item power and there's item tiers and there's breakpoints and there's all these other variables and that determines all of the stats and ancestral is just like a name that's on most of the higher level stuff. Yeah, just a label. And sacred is on a, on a name that's on most of the mid to high level stuff that overlaps with it. But it's like it doesn't mean that, that makes so much sense because people love labels. They want the color, you know, the color coded. Ne always pick up purples. Never pick up blues. You know what I mean? So like, and and the biggest thing is that it's uh, like these games, ARPGs, and a lot of games like this. It all comes down to numbers. You are spending thousands of hours 
trying to grind for like the 1% perfect roll on yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have an item, you want you want the maximum, you know, on a on, on a sword. You want to try to get the highest damage. Yeah. And then on the sword, there's like there's critical strike chance, critical strike damage, vulnerable damage yeah. and like strength. You want those four things out of like 100 things. You want those four so you have to get like a 1 out of 100 chance, oh, 1 out of 100 yeah, chance, yeah, 1 out yeah. of 100 to get the right collection and you want those stats to be as close they can to the be max. from 60 to 80 percent. You want 80 percent, right? You want the top rolls. Yeah, it's all a numbers game because it's all roll of the dice. Yep. And when it comes to the lottery, would you rather have more lottery tickets or less lottery? Yeah. Tickets? Yeah. Yep. More lottery. So tickets. the thing is, is that people say it's not even worth picking up the sacred items. Don't even pick them up. Just pick up the ancestral items. And the problem with that is. If you look at my gear now on my character, that's like, you know, end game character, both my characters that are like, you know, uh, level 80 to 100 in that range. Um, super, super powerful, more powerful than the average player's yeah. character of the same. You know, it's not like the best in the world. Right. But we're talking about the difference between 10 million and, you know, 13 million. It's like, yeah. They yeah. have 700,000 HP. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for, for, for most purposes. Um, half of my items started off as sacred items with, like, low item power numbers. But, like, the item power doesn't matter for certain things. Yeah, like, it matters yeah. for a sword because it changes the damage. But, like, on a ring, it doesn't have any meaningful effect on the stats. But it can still get the maximum yeah. like critical strike chance, critical, and that's all that matters. Yep. So the fact is, is that you're if if you're like I I've been looking for a ring, to, a better ring forever, and I can't find any, and yet and bing, you've been a leaving ring behind drops, sacred and rings, you just leave it there. So basically, the whole point of this entire thing is me saying like you don't understand what the labels or the numbers mean. I'm going to explain to you how they work, yeah, and how that can be a massive advantage, and how ultimately what. If you had the choice, if you could buy a lottery ticket, there's a million dollar jackpot, right? If you could buy one lottery ticket that had a 7% chance of winning the million dollars or 10 lottery tickets that all had 1% chance of winning, what would you rather do? Ten lottery and in Diablo, everybody would say, get that, give me that fatty Uber Chad, 7%. Giga Chad, 7%, you know, but it's like, well, if if you run the numbers on it, which like I said, this is all a numbers game. Yeah. You're going to pick up thousands of items. You want you want the denominator to be as big as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, they pick up a sacred item and they see, oh, that this number is so low. Well, yeah, but you pick up nine more, and one of them might just be higher yeah, than what you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. It's Half of my items started off as items that nobody would ever pick up, and I've had them from level sixty to level ninety, and I've never found anything better. Yeah. And what makes it worse? Is that like if you take a sacred item, you can like imprint a, a like a, a an enchantment thing on it. That if the enchantment came off of a an ancestral, then the item then changes to ancestral. Oh. So then everybody always sees everybody's got all ancestral items, and it's like some of those started. But they're as all sacreds. sacred items. Interesting. Which is another demonstration that. It's meaningless, it's meaningless because you're changing the label and nothing else changes about the item. Oh. So it does nothing. Yeah. So I, that I, makes a lot of sense that the confusion would be there because people want that clear cut. This better than that. You know what I mean? And they the, the, the developers are kind of shooting themselves in the foot because when they give you yeah. something that's an item power number, you would assume that the item power is about how powerful the item is. <laughs> and it's not. That's not how it works. Damn. That's... It's just... It's not so how it works. So when do you think this updated fourth revision video will be out? I'm hoping to get it done by, like, Saturday night. I could, I could maybe finish oh, tomorrow. Yeah. It should be shorter because I'm yeah. just... I'm, I don't have to talk about... I can talk to them like they're adults. You yeah, know what item yeah, power yeah, is. Yeah. I don't have to put a box around the number and tell you, you know, yep. the history of the, you know, whatever, right? No, I can just be like, sense. we all know item power. Cool. You guys all know breakpoints. Cool. What do you think is the top breakpoint? Everybody will be like 825. And I'll say, you're wrong. There's no breakpoint there. It doesn't exist. It's 725. Here's how I can prove it to you. And, and yeah. then, you know, like, it's just a whole bunch of, let me give you clear examples that show you why. I like it. Hell yeah. I want to so watch it. Should it should be short. 
It should be short and to the point, um, which honestly, like part of the reason why I want to make it short, make it to the point and make it not boring is because like, it's the whole like Asmund Gold could watch it. And honestly, yeah, I almost feel like there's no way. Maybe th this might be like hubris. I don't know. But I just feel like this is one of those videos that I think kind of will rock the boat like Tarkov videos yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when I make a video and I'm like, hey, guys, you all are wrong about. It. Yeah, it's like, OK, well, let's see. But then I present the data in a way yeah. I don't like attack people or call them stupid. Yeah, of you course. know, it's just like. It's not your fault. Let's all understand this together. Yeah. Uh, really, the only downside, the only way that this kind of thing backfires is how everybody is like, we all knew this before. Yeah. When they, when I, when I promise you they don't. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So. That's exciting, man. That's dope. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to. Uh, That's I'm looking dope. forward to just. I just needed done. Yeah. I want to watch it. I'll watch it for sure. Oh, and I tweeted. Oh, and the best part was Diablo, like the Diablo Twitter account. They just tweeted. One of my mods, <laughs> Overskilled, posted it. He goes, oh, God. And I'm like, oh, God, here we go. Um, it's a picture of... It says sacred items, ancestral items. And it's like sacred items found in world tiers three and four. Five upgrades, increased item power. Ancestral items. Founded World Tier 4, 5 upgrades, even more item power. And then the the tweet says, Sacred and Ancestral Gear could be the difference between victory and death in Diablo 4. And I, like, quote tweeted it and was like, I'm coming out with a video, like, public service announcement. These things don't work like you think they do. Like, don't sleep on the sacred items, you know, blah, 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 blah. Damn. And then the first person to reply was Shroud. Oh, shoot. And we had, like, a back and forth um where in so many words it was basically like like 95 percent of like we were in agreement with a couple of things that were basically just like twitter misunderstandings about yeah. kind of what we mean and and also honestly like i hearing his feedback i recognize how like some of my wording was a little clumsy and now i'm i can make sure i have a couple extra caveats in the video there you go yeah um so that you know i don't fall for that thing oh, oh here's the best thing Here's the best thing. I'm, I'm, I'm putting this in chat. As I scroll down and I see this dude, 146 likes, 4,600 views. He takes the picture, scratches out sacred items, and like on MS Paint, right, it's useless. W wasted bag space. Vendor items. And he crawled like, and I can't wait to be like, bro, you... Oh my god. You... You've passed up. I'm hoping at the end, what I'm basically going to do is I have a picture of like the God ring. It's like, it's got the four stats you want and they're all perfect. I found it in like the Diablo trading discord. It's oh, sold okay. for like hundreds of millions of gold. Like it's just like the God ring. And I just put a little box over the item power and over the quality. And... I'm not going to tell anybody if it was sacred or ancestral or what the item power is because it could be both. Yeah. You look at it and there's no way to know, but it's the God ring best in slot. There's no difference between if it was ancestral or legendary. Um, uh, Sorry, ancestral or sacred. Yeah. And basically I want to say, okay, you're in the pursuit of the God item. That's why we play this game, right? Yeah. We'll just know that this could be on the ground. And j j I don't say that. I say, know that this item could be a sacred item. Yeah. That you just walk right So just by. think about that the next time you see the sacred ring drop. And I have a feeling people are going to be like, well, now I got to check. Yeah. It's like you can't see a scratch ticket. If, you, if you're sitting there at a restaurant yeah. and a scratch ticket blows up at your foot, unless it's grimy or wet or nasty, I'm probably going to pick up the scratch ticket yeah, and you just gotta... look at it just yep. to see. Yep. You never know, right? Yep. So. Yep. We'll see, dude. That's interesting. I love it. That's <sighs> fascinating. I want to see it. So hopefully, I don't become like. There's a, there's a universe in which like I'm I get hated in the community for this. Like there's a universe in which it plays out like that. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think. No, yeah. First, I don't think it would be fair, but also, um, but there's, that's always kind of in the back of my head. Yeah. You know, because, if you want to rock the boat, there's a chance that people. It's not. Yeah. People don't like to be told that they're wrong. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but sometimes you got to get a little bit humbled. And I love to be told I'm wrong if the people can show me I'm wrong because yeah. then I learn something. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. The problem is that most of the time, people don't. Yeah. Want that? That's sick. We'll see. We'll see. That's dope. <sighs> well, bro, I don't know. I don't know what to do, man. The past like five minutes, you've been slideshow again. No. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Right. Right now. Yeah. Am I frozen? Bro, it, it fixed as soon as you started waving again. <laughs> Yo, what the hell? The, almost like it fit. might be like an encoding thing. I Maybe I'm sitting still for too long. 50% and it just... of that Diablo conversation, it was busted. And you started waving at it and it worked again. That's super weird. Yo, that's wild. I Honestly, I wonder if it's like an encoding thing. I don't if know. it just gets bogged That's down. That's what I'm saying. The... Like, I wish in the video ninja, uh, if there was like a quality settings or like a. There is a bitrate setting, and the first thing I do is turn it all the way up. Where is it? Oh, do you only the, have access to that mode. as the director of the room? Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. We'll see. I mean, it was chill. It was better this week than last week, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Well, uh, one day there will be a audio video app that will be made that will just work. <laughs> LOL. Um, but yeah, so, uh, that's the, that's the podcast for this week. We actually got some Tarkov stuff. I'm super excited about the Diablo video. Uh, we'll see what happens. We're still waiting on, there's lots of balls up in the air with Tarkov, Arena, Unity. <laughs> um, what? Balls? <laughs> Grow up! Uh, yeah, Marina, Unity, Patch Point 14, updated roadmap. I don't know, but I've been having fun. So, and that's, and fun is all that matters. I'm having fun playing Tarkov. You're having fun playing Diablo. We're having fun playing video games. That's good. So, uh, thank you guys as always for the support. It's been crazy. I feel like every week, dude, more people come in and they're like, yo, love the podcast, which is just like warms the heart. Um, yeah. So, thank yeah. you guys for hanging. Uh, if you missed part of it or most of it, this will be live on all the um, podcast platforms and on YouTube on Monday morning. Thank you guys so much for hanging. And we'll definitely see you all in the next one. Peace.